everyone. Happy Tuesday. Thanks so much for being with us today. My name is Kathleen Quo, and I am a program manager with Nevada Humanities, which is our state's council partner of the National Endowment for the Humanities. Our mission is to connect and transform communities by sharing and amplifying the stories, ideas, experiences, and traditions of the diverse people of Nevada. And with Humanities at Play in particular, our goal is to pair gameplay and other interactive activities with thoughtful discussions about the humanities and how they enrich our everyday lives. So a couple quick notes before we get started today. If you're a first time Twitch user, welcome in. Thanks so much for being here. If if you'd like to chat with us and ask questions, I encourage you all to make a free account so that way you can actively participate. And if you aren't already following us on Twitch, I also encourage you to click that follow button so that way you can get our notifications whenever we're live. Finally, if you're a new user of Twitch, we have a very fun feature called a chat command, which is an exclamation point followed by a keyword. And so we have a list of commands that you're welcome to try out in our chat. They're listed in the about section on our Twitch page and also a couple of them you can find in the title of our stream today. So today I am so excited to be joined by a returning guest, Hugh. Hugh, how are you doing? <laughs> Hi. I'm doing pretty good. I'm excited to be back and play another game with you, Kathleen. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm super excited for today. Um, so Hugh first streamed with us a few months ago. Um, time goes by so quickly already. I can't believe it was all the way back in May. Um, it is I August know. today. <laughs> and, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Summer's already over. <laughs> it really is. Uh, we played a really lovely indie game called Florence together. Um, and if you're interested in seeing that game, you can find our playthrough on YouTube. That recording is up now. And so, yeah, I'm super excited to just reconnect with them and see what they've been up to. Um, and so for those of you who might have not met Hugh before, and this is your first time, um, I'm just going to read a little bit about them. Hugh is a cultural worker and a multidisciplinary artist based in Las Vegas, Nevada, making places, spaces, and objects for love to flourish. They engage with co-creating love through community by facilitating a modular community art space called the Cloud House. Other concepts they explore range from emergent behaviors amongst animals and humans within urban spaces, as well as contemplations on the relationship between nature, soul, and space. They were selected for the Desert Companions 2022 Ones to Watch, and they've also received grants from Nevada Arts Council. So Hugh does a lot of really cool projects, um, recently went on a, on a very fun trip, um, and I think these are just some of the things that we'll explore in today's conversation, as well as, of course, um, you know, the topics that come up while we play today's game. Um, so Hugh, this is our first time playing through, and it feels weird to say play through. Um, I feel like the game we're playing today is called The Space in Between, and it's a visual novel. And so I've always like wondered about the genre, you know, is it, is it like an experience? Is it a game? Is it both? You know, when like, these are, I, yeah. I just have lost so many questions about the genre of visual novels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I kind of grew up with with seeing visual novels because I'm also a child of the internet. And <laughs> to me, what it feels like, it's like reading a book, but with a lot more stimulating factors of like you have maybe certain pixels that are moving, and you have um, you know music and all that that enhances the story. So maybe a movie, maybe a game, who knows? Yeah, all of the above, a multimedia experience. And thank you, Wardro. Master role players at it again with a new game. Yeah. <laughs> master game master here is what I should say. <laughs> um, so for those of you who have not heard of the space in between, um, and many of you might not have, because this is like a smaller indie game slash visual novel. It was released back in 2021, and it explores issues and themes that are tied to the Asian American experience. Um, I also thought this would be a good game to play through for our channel because um, it also talks about issues that are tied to mental health, um, healthy relationships, um, diaspora, and I just thought that all the topics in this game um, would make for a really nice just conversational playthrough with you. Um, so I'm just really excited to get their thoughts in the game, but I think it's also really important for everyone in the chat to feel like you're a part of this conversation too. So um, I hope that you feel like you're encouraged to ask questions of us or you know share your comments and thoughts as we, as we journey onwards together. So um, yeah, as we get ready to launch this, uh, get settled in, get comfy, hydrate, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. get this game started. Now have a cup of tea or whatever <laughs> drinks you like to have beside you. All right, Hugh, can you see and hear this? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And then for everyone in chat, let us know too if, you know, the sound's too loud or not loud enough, but um, we'll get started. 
and June. What is the answer to problem 14? You have absolutely no idea what the professor is talking about. You had spent the previous night watching anime instead of doing your homework. <laughs> All of a sudden, you feel That's a kick relatable. from the side of your desk. <laughs> it's 47. A voice whip whispers from your right. Yeah, already this is like so relatable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you see Miles. So we, we've already established we have two, I guess, protagonists. One is June and one is Miles. Mm -hmm. After class, you approach him. Thanks for that, you say. Glancing at his backpack, you see a familiar pin from your favorite band. You, you listen to Fleet Foxes? Your first date with him is, ooh, a concert or at the park? What do you mm, think? I... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Those are both good options. Yeah, I feel like a concert's kind of a rough... Isn't that like a rough first date, though? You don't really get to talk, like, I imagine. Like, you're yeah. just kind of... Unless there's, like, a post-concert or, like, a pre-concert experience, like, dinner or, like, I don't know, going home after. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with the, <laughs> the geech at the bar, at the park. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, like, too introverted to go to someone on like a first date to yeah. a concert <laughs> and what if you don't like yeah. them then you're stuck with them the whole time at the concert <laughs> yeah yeah i i've personally gone to concerts by myself a lot actually yeah. just because of that yeah mm -hmm. oh i love the geeches comment heck yeah pins as a way to meet people you can't see it but i have a, a bulletin board um in my office that has a ton of pins and keychains um love it <laughs> oh that's awesome <laughs> welcome in ninja a week later, you two sit at the beach pier, listening to street performers as the sky turns from a soft pink to black. Oh, who, who do you want to read? Do you want to be Miles? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. Will you be my girlfriend? Oh, what happens if you pick no? I mean, I feel like I should pick yes, yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, because I feel like if you pick no, maybe the... Does the game the, end? Do the it? game end? Yeah. <laughs> we, I mean, I feel like we should say yes, but... Okay, I'll say yes. Okay. I would play this again in the future and see what happens if I pick no. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Hugh. <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> you two bond over your shared taste in obscure video games or memes? <laughs> I, I feel like it would be obscure video games. Okay. <laughs> the Tan says, if we pick no, it's like credits roll. <laughs> Ostrich, fastest stream so far if we pick no. He likes Night in the Woods. Yeah. Oh, I have Night in the Woods. The beginner- <gasps> Florence! Oh my gosh! This is uh, so meta! <laughs> wait, is this made by the same person? No, or... it's not. Yeah, it's a different group of developers. Huh. That's too funny. Wow. That's synchronicity. Okay, That's this is meant to be. We are meant to play this game. Mm -hmm. The only question I have now is, when's the wedding? As the weeks go on, you discover that he is endearingly awkward, sincere, and nurturing. You like how easily your conversations flow, a constant stream of stories, surprising vulnerability, and recommendation sharing. He may not have been your first best friend, but he's the most special one of all. Mm -hmm. I can't believe Florence is, is an option. I just, I can't. <laughs> yeah, have you played the other ones before? The um, other ones No, listed? I don't know what the beginner's guide is. I'm going to look that up. Um, I have Night okay. in the Woods in my library, but I haven't played it yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, because here's this guy who notices the way you can't help yourself when you get excited, who holds you when you need it the most. You didn't realize that there was still romance in the world left for you, but here it is, big and glowing and full. You decide to celebrate by a having a solo dance party in your room or baking every baked good you could possibly think of <laughs> so what what would you pick immediately kathleen um baking <laughs> you're baking uh, i i would pick the solo dance but why baking um because i i love baking i think it's mm. relaxing and a lot of fun um and then you can like give it to people and also sneak a taste for yourself as well <laughs> um i'm also i feel like i don't know i don't know if i've ever done a solo dance party so maybe it's just it, it wouldn't even cross my mind as like an option <laughs> have you ever had no. a solo dance party oh all, <laughs> all, the, all time. the time all the time i i think part of it is because like my 
my personal nature is to is to be an introvert but then it when something so exciting like this i would just imagine myself like <laughs> being in my room just like either like shaking out my <laughs> limbs or like doing something and just not being perceived and just exist and like but still a way to let out my energy and emotions and stuff yeah a very personal moment i love that um, yeah. and I, <laughs> I love the Geech's comment, solo dance party, because I don't want to clean the kitchen. <laughs> that's, that's, that's right, smart. yeah. <laughs> the most you'll get dirty is just your body through sweating, dancing. Okay, well, I'm fine doing solo dance party. Um, <laughs> let's do that. The playlist, all throwback songs. The perfect choice for pretending that you're the star in a music video. Your friends don't even need to ask why you're smiling so much. He takes you two to the lookout spot next to his suburban house, and you slow dance to Anna Hunt by Vampire Weekend or Golden Hour by Casey Musgraves. I, I know Golden Hour, but I don't know Hannah Hunt. Maybe if I heard it, I would. Do you know either of these songs? I know Vampire Weekend, but I don't know that song specifically. Yeah. yeah so we can go with Casey. Okay. Yeah. A good song. Baby, don't you know that you're my golden hour, the color of my sky? You've set my world on fire, and I know, I know everything's going to be all right. And suddenly, you understand why heartbreak and sorrow must happen. To have this joy shine so brightly, you see the neighborhood lights reflect in his eyes, and you dare to take his hand. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm just, it's really funny. <laughs> That's the only choice, yeah. Hand. It's really cute. You are now five months into your relationship. Oh, wow. Hey. All right, this is me. I can't believe you're driving us two hours just to go stargazing. I officially won the boyfriend lottery. I like driving. Plus, it'll be nice with just us two. My sense of direction is kind of questionable, and there's no signal, so I don't know if that's a good thing. Or, oh, okay, maybe there's two options. Or, we did pick a good li uh, uh, long drive playlist. Okay. Have you have you heard this? I recently saw this on Twitter of like someone proposing a challenge for everyone, right? To come up with a playlist of twenty songs um, that tell people about you, and it, it's not about it shouldn't be songs that you think other people will like, but it's like songs that go to the core of your soul. And the whole idea of the challenge is to take your time to do it. Also, you can only pick one song from one artist. Mm. And yeah, I don't know. Just thought bring it up if anyone wants to try it. Yeah, no, I love themselves. that. Um, I, I've i made playlists that are like very like for myself, but also I think the idea of creating a playlist that's about yourself and maybe for someone else without, you know, it's it's the core of who you are. I love that idea because it really forces you to engage with like your past and think about you know what kind of person mm -hmm. am I without wondering about like worrying about you know how others see you. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Share some um, if people are are willing to share. Give this give this question a thought and share mm -hmm. share maybe share a couple songs and bands in the in the chat. Uh, I would love yeah. to love to know. Um, yeah, because I, yeah. I don't know if uh, if you remember a website like 8tracks or playlist.com, but they would link YouTube songs with within the play uh, within that website and then you can just have your own list of songs. But now with YouTube and their copyright laws, it's not the same. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe a <laughs> vibe of the website or of the internet. Mm -hmm. I, I miss making mixed CDs though, for sure. I'm going to do the, oh, yeah. the, we did pick playlist. a playlist, yeah. A good long okay. drive playlist. The lookout spot will be pretty. It's also in the middle of the woods. If a bear tries to eat us, you're fighting it and I'm running for help. <laughs> Glad to know you're committed to our safety. <laughs> Thank you for protecting me, Miles. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am very committed. I'm the one devising the plan in case a bear mauls us. Oh no. I think we'll be fine. Uh, I bet I'm a faster runner than you. Okay, I can either say, I got it. I distract the bear by seducing it and you can run into the bear and knock it over. Then we both run away. Or I can say, the power of fear will motivate me to run faster. <laughs> I feel like the power of fear is a little, it's funnier yeah. to say. Oh, look at this bear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> bears 
run 30 miles per hour, you run a 10 minute, you run a 10 minute mile, right? Run, okay. I'm sure I can shave off two minutes in a feat of terror. <laughs> and Ostrich, <laughs> thank you for sharing um, two songs. I don't think, I don't think I've heard of either of those. I mean, I've heard mm -hmm. of Rise Against, but I don't know. I don't know if it's mm -hmm. on Roadside. So thank you. Yeah, Please. I have to look those songs up. Yeah. Thank you for the suggestion. We got to make a Humanities at Play song playlist now. And yes, the Keech, Mr. Bearfax yeah. over here. <laughs> How does he know that? <laughs> also, I just, I love this bear. This is a great, like, MS, <laughs> MS Paint bear. It's <laughs> yeah. incredible. I heard if you see a bear, you should make yourself bigger to scare it. I've heard a lot of bear facts or how to avoid them in the past, and I don't know exactly which ones to do. I've heard some of them is to stay completely still, and others it's the same that Miles just said, and then other people have also said to just keep talking and singing to the bear singing. and just back away. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. Well, I'm not going to dispense bear facts or like bear like safety facts because I don't know any. So I don't want to, I don't give false information, but right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who knows, you know? Right. Well, I guess, yeah, June says she doesn't uh, want to make herself bigger because I don't want the bear to think I'm fat. <laughs> no. That's, that's not what I meant. Um, okay. I could say I'm a small Asian girl. In order to be big, I need to gain a hundred pounds and a whole foot or then enlighten me. I'm going to say the mm. first one, I feel like. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Go for it. Then you can start by eating the snacks we packed. I do not need to be told twice to eat, but it's going to take me longer than an hour to gain any weight. <laughs> how are you supposed to do it? Wait. How, how you're supposed to do it is you raise your arms and start yelling. That's how you get bigger. And um, the geech <laughs> said to lean into bear facts. <laughs> yes. Um, well, one bear fact I know is that up in Alaska, there's a place called King Salmon where you can go uh, for a very expensive camping trip in a uh, electric wire barbed area. And then in the morning, they take you to go see bears that just came out of hibernation to mm -hmm. catching all the salmon. And they all always go migrate towards the same stream to catch salmon. So that's a bear fact, maybe, or bear travel fact. Yeah, I love it. Bear trivia. <laughs> yeah. I don't like this tactic. Fine. If the bear comes, I'll attack and you run. I'm glad we can agree on the plan. I don't think that's a great plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lunch and learn. Yes. I'm glad yeah. you're, you're learning during lunch. I, too, am thrilled. Hmm. I kind of wish that the background music kept playing, like while we were chatting. Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting that it yeah, only has like one loop, but that's all right. I don't think I've been here since I was a kid. I didn't realize how beautiful it is here. I'm so used to the city. Mm. Yeah, there's no one here. That's how I felt this past weekend too, up in Goldfield in the rural town. Yeah, Just... we need to chat about that. Yeah. Um. Uh, let's keep going with the, uh, can I get, get a little further with this game? Yeah, maybe once we lay down in the grass, we can talk about Goldfield. So, yeah, yeah. so let's set up the blanket and lay down. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do you, oh, do you know any constellations? So, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll kind of, like, I don't want to say pause, because it's not really a pause, but Hugh, yeah, what were you doing in Goldfield this past weekend? Yeah, so um, I don't know where everyone in the chat is at the moment, but there is a small town about northwest of Las Vegas, and it's called Goldfield, and it is a, a rural town of about 150 people. Um, it's historically a mining town, and now through a lot of what I've learned this past weekend is uh, flooding and fires and flooding. Uh, it's it's basically a very much um, disenfranchised place. However, uh, artists have been congregating it and um, there's a place called the International Car Forest of the Last Church. Uh, it, it's, a whole, it's a long, long name, but basically it's this place out in the desert where a guy in the 80s decided like, I'm gonna spend my life just burying cars vertically in the dirt. And he did that 
for a very long time, and his granddaughter Sharon still lives there, and she's now on the board for the car forest, and she allowed me to go there as well. Uh, but basically. With the cars there, artists started gravitating towards it from all over the world, literally just bringing the graffiti art and, you know, sweet pasting, all that. And they started like sharing their art on all of those cars. And so this past weekend, I was um, invited to be the first artist in residence of the car for us, both because I just asked them. <laughs> That's exciting. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, my partner and I, we went to go visit our friends Richard and Astrid, who are also really amazing uh, Nevada-based artists uh, who live there. Like, hey, um, we we want to do something here, like add, add our art, you know, because they told us recently that they've been having issues with tagging. Mm. And there's there's debates between, you know, the, the art of tagging and graffiti art slash painting. And it's they, they want more people to bring care and intention to the art that they bring and put on the car. So that's what me and my partner did this past weekend is we live in the desert under um star like a starry sky like this and just had an office out of one of the cars and just mended uh the windows and we were asking visitors are you a mirror or a window oh i love that can can one of the mods pin that um are you a i'm just gonna yeah um, are you a yeah. mirror or are you a window can someone pin, yes. pin that that's great um can you tell us more about um, like, yeah, where did a lot of people show up? Was it like people like passers by or like, what was it? What was that like? Thank you. Astrid. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was, I feel like we talk about like pivotal points in our lives, right? Rather that's in childhood or in old age. And I, I feel like for me this past weekend was a moment of just like getting to hear people's stories from all over the world because I didn't even expect a lot of people to show up, but I ended up meeting people from France, wow. from Mexico, from Holland, oh from gosh. up in Reno. I met some Russians who are going up to Burning Man for the week. Yeah, it's that um, time. I've, I've met some local folks who are just the quirkiest, most intricate people, like sign painter Bob, who lives in town and was barefoot the whole time. Um, and he, and his home, he invited us to his home and it was like just this world of trailers that he salvaged and each trailer has a different world that he's created um, with items that he exchanged with signs he's made and also just he's a he's a dumpster diver like like me. Um, and we've met people who used to work at the test sites, uh, which is interesting because they can't tell us a lot of things. And the test sites, I mean the nuclear test sites, because yeah. Nevada is a very big base for that. Um, we've met a geologist who works at a mine up in Tonopah, who shared with us her thoughts of, um, like, are you a mirror or a window? And she shared with us this really interesting thought that stuck with me, which is like, um, that she's sometimes afraid to look at the mirrors because she wonders what the mirror sees Aww. and what stories the mirrors have taken, you know? and seen over the years and it made me realize like wow i i hope that the the mirrors that i use for mending the the windows uh with of the cars that may they also hold start holding stories with the land and with the people who see it um so yeah long long answer but i i met a lot of people <laughs> and a lot of animals when Aww. i was out there no that sounds really special and um, did I, I? I think I shared this once in a stream. I don't know if it was with you or someone else. I feel like we were talking about mirrors and time travel. Maybe I'm just making this up in my head. But anyway, when I was in high school, I read a book about, I think it was about time travel and about like light, you know? So when you're looking into the mirror, right, you're technically looking to the past, like however long it takes for mm -hmm. the light to hit that one to get back to. You. So I, mm -hmm. I always thought, you know, like if I could send messages to myself, um, you know, through the past or into the future, like through mirrors or in my own head, like I would try to send <laughs> messages to myself in the future by thinking it now and then trying to remember it like five minutes later. But anyway, this sort of like idea of when you look into the mirror, you're looking into the past has always uh, stuck with me. And I thought I would share that. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a beautiful answer. Oh, 
my gosh, Kathleen! But I don't, I don't know That's if awesome. I'm, a, I don't know if I'm a mirror or a window. I have to think about that. But um, when you when oh, you yeah. when you speak of mirrors, that's what I that's what I thought of. Oh yeah, I that that was something I I noticed too. Is that like when I asked when I was asking this question, it's it's a heavy question. Yeah. Sometimes so people are like, I don't know if I could answer this right now, and I realize it's like you don't have to. It it could just be a metaphorical thing and. I just it's offer it's my offering to you and at the same time I've had people tell me like I'm gonna think on that I'm gonna go take a walk around and I'll come back and I'll tell you and and I've heard some interesting answers that way as well yes so I I'd recommend to take your time and I'm I'm gonna read the Geeches uh, comment in chat. I mean, technically, it takes time for light to travel from an object then into our eyes and be processed by our brains. We're always looking into the past. It's just more past, given the addition of the factor of adding light travel to the mirror plus the object to you plus brain time mm -hmm. versus object to you and brain. Thank you for sharing that, the Geech. And then yeah, yeah Tan, beautiful. You choose when you gaze into the abyss. The abyss, abyss also gazes into you. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I love I love that question though. By the way, he just yeah, are you a mirror or a window? And I don't think um, I think it kind of it's like a Rorschach test. Like I think the way that you think about a mirror or a window will influence your answers. I think there's positive and negative aspects to both. Um, but yeah, really mm -hmm. really thoughtful. I'm gonna I'm gonna progress the the story, but we can keep talking, of yes. course. Yes. So you just Sounds asked good. me, do I know any constellations? And June says, no, I wish I did. I always thought they were boring, so <laughs> I made my own. What do you mean? I would create random shapes from the stars and then come up with my own backstory. Either a random one I thought of or something for my life. I feel like people in the past also did that. I think that's how constellations came to be, right? Like you see shapes and then you make a story about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so wholesome. My mom said I was an imaginative kid. <laughs> You could do that now. That's okay. It was a stupid no. idea. No, no, it's not. <laughs> no, I want to. Here, let me start. <laughs> Good. Continue. <laughs> I love the continue. Yeah. The ones we have are just the stories that persisted. Yeah, and Nikita, I think also too mm -hmm. of um, whatever, I guess, whatever culture you belong to, because I'm sure like Western mm -hmm. constellations differ from, you know, constellations from other parts of the world. Yeah, and I mean, even the way that we we came to uh, native names, right, for our plants and our mountains and our animals, it's like that that mountain right there, it looks like a hat. And then the hat in our language is this. Like when I was in Vietnam, um, I, I went on a tour through these little mountains that they filmed King Kong in or something. Mm -hmm. And it's like uh, nationally preserved geological space. Uh -huh. And um, my tour guide asked, helped me ask the, our, our boat uh, oaring lady, uh, what do the locals call this mountains? And she told us that the mountains, they called it the Cat Scratch Mountains because mm -hmm. they look like these like tears on the sky, on the skyline. Uh -huh. And that's just how they know it. And I thought that was just wonderful. But yeah, that's kind of how a lot of names come from, besides right. their Latin names. You <laughs> Spread know? by word of mouth and tradition and culture and culture. waggles, eyebrows, humanities. <laughs> humanities, yeah. <laughs> okay, you are now stargazing with Miles. To form a constellation, click and drag between pairs of stars until all edges of the constellation are visible. To find more constellations, move the mouse to the edge of the screen to scroll across the night sky. Completing constellations will unlock more constellations. Have fun! <laughs> Continue. Okay. Okay. Oh. It's exciting. I like this interactive part of this game. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, I'm gonna oh, okay. Can I? I don't know. If you have thoughts on where things should go, I'm just connecting. Can go I, I go, go wherever it takes you. Oh, I can't undo lines. <gasps> oh no. Okay, can you can you go to the left corner of the screen? Oh. Oh wow. Oh wait, there's more. Oh. Wait, how big is this? Can I? I don't know. Oh, there's more here. Okay, so I think there's just three for now. Yeah. Is this like one big one or? Yeah, maybe try connecting to one of the ones in the circle, whichever one you like, and then see if it takes us out, more out. 
Oh, oh no? it won't let me. Oh. Interesting sound effects. I can't undo yeah. my lines. Uh-oh. Oh, well, maybe I'll... Can I connect this? No. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'll just... <laughs> control Z, control Z. I know. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna... Oh, it is more. Can you keep going? Can I do this? Oh. Interesting. Hmm. Well. I guess we don't have complete freedom, but that's all right. Mm -hmm. I like the sound. I see. Oh, do we see a record or a CD? <laughs> They're both round. <laughs> um, I I am a fan of CDs. I grew up with CDs, so. Let's say. But... Yeah. I used to make mixed CDs for people when I was younger. We were just talking about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cute. That's cute. That's cute. It was inspired by like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to like take in like what Miles may sound like. Uh huh. But yeah. She used to give them to me when I was younger. You've never really talked about her a lot until today. It's weird to acknowledge that things are ever good about us. A lot of the time when I'm talking to people who don't know the situation between us, I act like we're good. My mom does this too, or my mom would hate that. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. so we're starting to get into a little bit of like some complicated family dynamics here. Mm -hmm. I don't ever forget the truth, but sometimes it's easier to pretend I'm fine. And I like the, just going to chat, the Geach's comment, I wonder how the new constellations people make would vary by things like age, culture, socioeconomic background, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that might be like a fun activity. I would love to present people with like a star map and just have people, you should do this too, <laughs> make constellations yeah. and yeah, chat about them and make up stories. I think that'd be really interesting. Like how we can yeah. see the same sea of stars, but the way our brain like mm -hmm. organizes or what's important to us. I love that. And then sharing that as a story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me about these CDs. My mom loved to watch Chinese dramas with my grandma. They do it almost every night growing up. For my eighth birthday, she gave me a CD with a theme song so the dramas and her own personal favorite songs on there. Okay, Hugh. Does your family watch <laughs> Chinese dramas? <laughs> oh my gosh, of course. It's like we even have like a, the Chinese version of Roku. It's called I Talk BB. <laughs> and it's connected to our TV. And my, my grandma has it on all day. Sometimes she'll fall asleep watching it. <laughs> but I I do really relate to this. Because I, well, I would buy the drama soundtracks myself. Because I was really into Korean dramas and Taiwanese dramas. Because those were the best. <laughs> And K dramas are all over all over Netflix now. Yeah, yeah, they're so <laughs> dramatic and juicy, and they suck you in, you know. So, yeah, I, my mom, uh, I think not until I was in middle school. I don't know what suddenly got her into it. Maybe she went back to Taiwan and she just came back with like a massive stack of like <laughs> CDs, and then from then just like accrued this like huge pile. Um, and yeah, she oh would she would God. watch them. My 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 Mandarin isn't good enough to follow along with her shows, but when I was in college, I downloaded um, Taiwanese dramas that had subtitles, so I could mm. um, watch and follow along, and some K dramas too. But I kind of nice. want to get back into it sometimes. <laughs> Have you seen the recent trend? I don't know if this is more common now, but. I see YouTube videos that my mom watches where they do like an hour explanation of an entire like 20 episode K-drama. And it's like, you know, every K-drama is usually an hour long and they somehow condense the whole thing into an hour <laughs> explanation video. No, I haven't but. seen those, but <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I love this picture to it. Do you think this is her mom or of her? I don't know. I feel like this is her, but we haven't seen either of their faces. That's have true. We? Yeah. Okay. I love I love the the dreamy art though. Yeah, it's giving karaoke vibes. <laughs> I didn't know you two ever shared a good moment. Oh. It certainly doesn't feel like it now. Now, all I have left of that memory is a legacy of giving CDs to boys who didn't like me back. Oh. oh. <laughs> Were they aware it was a confession of love? 
Oh, this is very sweet. I love this, um, just, you know, we're having this conversation, but I like that the game sort of, like, pans back to remind us we're watching stars together while we're, while we're chatting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, if you show up to class and see an unprompted CD on your desk with the words, mm -hmm. four miles, I'm sure you can take a guess, or... That was what was so great about it. If they confronted me about it and didn't feel the same way, I could turn it back onto them for over-interpreting my gift. Hmm. Hmm. I don't... I don't know which I would have picked because I, I really didn't uh, get involved in dating as a, as a teenager. So this is, this is up to you if you want to choose. Yeah, I think I like the second answer a little bit second. more. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> That's very unlike you now. I know. Now I'm like, I demand you let me know if you like me, or the very thought of my face repulses you. <laughs> I was going to say you're more forward now, but that's another way of putting it. <laughs> as absolutely horrifying as it is to face rejection all the time, there's this huge relief to putting everything on a table, knowing I've done everything I could have. Uh, I love the Geechee's comment. There's a cool recent article about kimchi from NPR. They discuss the culture slash tradition of making kimchi and about the use of Korean food as a soft diplomacy. Yeah, like culture wars and mm. stuff. Interesting. I would love to read that. Yeah. And there's actually... Oh, and, <laughs> and there's actually a tie between the money invested by the government and the rise of K-dramas in Western culture. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. I could see. That. I could see that with like you know anime being such a big thing now in the West, and that being part of so, uh, what is it? Soft. You. You. What word did you use? Oh, soft diplomacy. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. You'd think that I would be more careful over time, but I'm always chasing that slight possibility that maybe this is the one. Don't you get insecure after a while? Of course I do, but I still go for it anyway. I'm not just talking about relationships. I'm always on the edge of greatness or disaster. <laughs> yeah, I, I had this conversation with someone who came to the car for us this past weekend. And uh, he he was asking me, like, how, how do you show up for people even and finding out that they just take and take and take from you, like leeches? And similar to what June was saying, it's like... I don't know. I can't always tell who's going to like just use want, use more of my energy, but I know one thing is that if I know I want to protect my own energy cuz I know that I can show up better for other people when I'm there for myself. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's like part of building relationships is kind of seeing that side of a person, right? And being there and being like, okay, can I take that on or not? And, you know, putting together a burn CD takes a lot of effort. And not not all the time it's going to be reciprocated. But she still does it. And I think that's really admirable to yeah. do. And romantic, too. <laughs> yeah, definitely putting uh, a little bit of herself into everything she, she gives away to people. Yeah. Um, and Miles says, I'd be, I'd, I'd be way too stressed out about the unknown. Yeah. I'm scared all the time, so it's not about being fearless. If anything, it's acknowledging every single reason why you're afraid by taking that chance anyways. Do you see yourself and your mom? Hard-hitting question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course I do. All the damn time. What do you guys have in common? We're both loud, although in different ways. She's more of an angry loud. They both like the song Hotel California. We usually hate the same people. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> yeah. Does that scare you? I can say my mom is a deeply unhappy person, so yeah, I can't end up like her, or no, I know I'll never be like her. Ooh, this is... This is difficult, right? This is really getting into June's psyche. And also I feel like these choices kind of dictate what kind of person she is. I feel like yeah. if I pick the first one, it's almost like I am rejecting my mom in a way. Like I don't want to understand her. Or mm -hmm. the second one, no, I, n I know I'll never be like her. Maybe a little bit more empathetic, but none of these yeah. are, are easy, easy answers. Yeah. I feel like the the first one is like acknowledging that 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 there's that aspect of her mom and aspect that she can take on herself mm -hmm. and she doesn't want to and maybe that's like I don't know effort to not be continue that type of generational 
behavior. Yeah. But then the the second one is like just plain like no boundary. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. The second choice feels very final. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and angry ostrich said Kathleen slash Hugh. Do you guys see your mother in you? What do you think? That's a good question. I feel like. You know, I also have complicated family dynamics. Actually, I think a lot of, um, yeah, I can't, I don't want to generalize because every family is different, but I know there's like a rise of, I follow an account on Instagram that's all about like intergenerational trauma and especially mm-hmm. for Asian American families, um, like, mm-hmm. you know, between like first generation and second generation, um, like parents and children. So that reminds me a little bit mm-hmm. of my mom. So I guess. I don't know. I think I think I see parts of my mom in me, but I also don't know my mom very well. I'm going to admit that I don't know her very well as a person because of like linguistic and cultural barriers. And that's always been something that's been difficult to me. Like, I wish I knew more about, you know, her life when she was growing up, about her dreams and her aspirations. I don't know a lot about my my mom or my dad because um, we just weren't like a very big, like sharing talkative family yeah. when I was growing up. So that's always been a little bit difficult. You know, like I think some families are like, you know, super open, you might share everything or, you know, you just, you just talk about this stuff. But with my family, it's very like impersonal. We know we're always there for yeah. each other, but I just don't yeah. know them. So, yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I, I get that too. Uh, the aspect of you have a language barrier on top of like being immigrants or being first or second generation because i'm an immigrant and yet but i am more assimilated into american and western culture than my mom and there are aspects of like you know the the conversation is kind of hard to have about the past when they're so focused about what they're gonna do tomorrow yeah. and but the thing i see and myself as my mom is my choice of colorful clothes and we have very similar tastes and things we have very similar tastes and just vibrant clothes she just recently got a new pair of glasses and it's like bright pink (laughs) and you know and yeah angry ostrich Uh, i don't know if i've met someone who doesn't have some level complicated when it comes to their family yeah i get it yes true i think when tolstoy has a quote if we're gonna like be like literary i don't know exact quote but it's like every was i'm gonna look this up right now <laughs> mm-hmm. did you know i'm talking about there's a there's a quote about family yeah so the first sentence of leo tolstoy's no- novel anna karenina is happy families are all alike every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way um you know mm-hmm. you can take that with a grain of salt or however mm-hmm. you mean it to mean but i think of that too so yeah, I guess I see a little bit of my mom in me, um, but I'm also my own person. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I had a I had an interesting conversation this weekend of like, how do we be in relationships with people, either romantic or not, and still have our being able to individuate, yeah. being able to have solitude and create ourselves with ourselves. And. Uh, I sh- you should introduce your mom to the brand new work, Super Colorful Clothes, woman-owned, artist-driven. I'm going to look that up right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I follow them on Instagram. Also, thank you, uh, The Geach, for that recommendation. Yeah, they're they're very fun. So give, oh them, a, give them a look. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Gosh, I don't know. <laughs> this is hard. I don't know what answer I want to pick. <laughs> I... Tan had a good point when he said, you know, the second one is a little bit more final. The first mm-hmm. one also just makes me sad uh, when she says, I yeah, I can't end up like her. But you don't know. <laughs> yeah. I feel like maybe the first one. So if we continue com- the conversation, it would be easier yeah. to, you know, go deeper. Okay. I'm going to say my mom is a deeply unhappy person. So, yeah, I can't end up like her. Oh. Do you hate yourself? These, oh these my difficult gosh. questions. <laughs> God, what kind of question is that? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I am my mom. I don't think you are. Then what makes us different? Your capacity to accept others, no matter how many times you've been hurt. You give every person a fair chance. I never know what new thing you're going to try. Your mom is stuck in her old habits. That's something about you to love. I love Miles already. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is like very, I don't know how old they are. I don't know if they're in like their, 
Yeah. I guess they're early, <laughs> early university, maybe in their early 20s is my guess. That's very mature, I feel like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh, the geech. Okay. What differentiates you from your mom? Half a gen genome and around 5,000 different mutations. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. A good, good geneticist answer. <laughs> okay, I guess I don't see what's good about myself. Then I'll be here to remind you, okay? Oh, more constellation time. There. Okay, here's one. I'm just gonna see if there's okay. more. So there's one, two. Maybe there's just two for now. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then this mystery constellation we didn't finish yet. Yeah. Oh, oh, we didn't. I thought we finished yeah, that one. Yeah, I did too. Well, here's. Maybe we'll start with this one. They're all kind of circular, aren't they? Or is that just yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm curious what they will end up being. Yeah. No? It doesn't want me to go there. Can I go here? No? Maybe it's another circle. No? Okay. Ooh. It's... Mm. I was thinking spiral. Yeah. I guess there's only one right in yeah, like, so I can't put this here, for instance. Is a crown? Oh, a camera. <laughs> I see a camera. Hmm. I was thinking, what if pictures could do more than just show you show you how something looked? Let's see you took a picture of a landscape. You could also smell the fresh air there. You could feel the ground. You could basically feel like you were there. I feel like that's the future of VR. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been having conversations about this too, of like, you know, well, even as we are live in different states, um, I'm able to feel where you are and you're able to be here with me, and it's like, we're basically in the same place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel, also, like, I feel like when our attention is, like, so focused, like, we're in this scene together, too. Yeah. Oh, okay. I can say, I feel like that is just a recipe for disaster, or that's just a bigger incentive for me to not leave my house. Aww. <laughs> I, I get that too. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. What do you What do you I think? think? I feel like maybe the second one. Okay. Because <laughs> I feel like it's a, it's funny to say. Yeah. You could use it that way. You could be on a call with your friend. Look at a picture of Paris, all while being in your PJs. Photojournalism will be on a whole new level. Tan says, if smells become a transmittable sense that VR or other mediums can replicate, that opens the doors for so many possibilities in games, movies, and other media, and so much trolling. Yeah, absolutely. And Geech says, a really low-budget version is having someone in a theater with this picture projected. You turn on a fan, throw in some pine car air fresheners, maybe get <laughs> someone to make some bird call noises. Yeah, or it's like in Disney wow. when was it when you like watch something or on a ride and they like make it interactive by like splashing water on you or something <laughs> yeah <laughs> have the wind there's a there's an artist that um is named anika yi and i believe she's a chinese artist and she works a lot with smell and technology so one of her most like famous uh works of art was like a lab of all these different um uh door uh what is it washer doors and you go in there and you smell like the the dust after sweeping with a broom and that is conveying like the feeling of the loss of a childhood home oh. and you go in there you sniff and that was part of the art and each each door had a different scent that would trying to invoke a different nostalgic smell in your past or in her past wow that's really cool i'm gonna look her up thank you for sharing that yeah 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 4D experiences, yeah. Yeah, let me look it up for you. Anika. Okay. Um, uh, for, yeah. So you might not be able to put the link in chat, but you can um, uh, message it okay. to me or um, you know type out the name of the artist. Yeah. Thank you. Anika Yi. Mm -hmm. People who are in long distance relationships would love this. Mm. Do you think you could do one? A long distance relationship? Oh, oh I've been yeah. I've been in several. <laughs> wow. I mean, yes, but it's it's difficult. And it also depends, I think, on the distance. There's a difference between being an hour away 
states away, mm -hmm. oceans away. Like I, I know people who are married and live in different countries. Like that's a whole different mm -hmm. level. Um, I feel mm -hmm. like so difficult, yeah, but you can make it work. I think so. Yeah. I need to be optimistic about something in my life, and it's obviously not my career prospects. Seriously? What? It's better than having nothing. <laughs> I think I could. I would have to have a date to look forward to that I would see my partner. You know, about your camera idea, I think it'd be interesting if we could do that with pictures of ourselves at different points of our lives. Mm. Oh. We could see how far we've come. I can say your therapist would love that, or there are times when I'm sad where just a reminder that I was once happy is enough. Oh, I really like that answer. Yeah, me too. Okay, let's I think that's the one. Thinking about good memories when I'm sad just makes me feel like being happy is further away. Oh, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> These are some very nuanced answers of like, yes, yes and. Yeah. <laughs> each has a miles in this one yeah. that's fair that's the ebb and flow of life mm -hmm. then i wish life would stop ebbing so much if we could put a barrier to be like i'm only allowed to be this disappointed in myself then that would be great we could put, i'm just thinking if we could put a barrier to be like i'm only allowed to be this disappointed in myself i see I had to like say it again and like imagine the barrier to like really get this. Mm -hmm. You have nothing to seriously be disappointed in yourself for. Oh, trust me. There's some deep rooted regret within myself. Relatable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's why we're dating? Because we both deal with things way beyond our mental capacity. Yeah. Probably. Okay, next next constellation. But with this one? Can I do this one now? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Oh. Isn't oh. oh, I see the pond at Boston Commons. I've been here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Really? Yeah, I lived I, I lived in Boston when I was doing my master's degree. So I love how wow. this is rendered. This is very cool. If anyone's ever been here and knows this view um, let mm -hmm. me know in chat. I, this is really surreal. <laughs> Did you take a lot of walks there when you were in us? Uh, when you said school, right? Yeah. So I, so I went to school or from a master's. I went to school at Tufts, um, which was like across the river. Um, and then, so you had cross the river to get into like downtown Boston. So technically Tufts is in like Somerville slash Medford, but the public transportation was really, really easy. Like you could take the bus, mm -hmm. you could take like a little train. There was a free shuttle. Um, that not a lot of people knew about, but the free shuttle would go on weekends, I think, maybe weekdays too, from in front of the music school at Tufts all the way down to like the other music schools um, in like downtown Boston for free. And it was so awesome. Like not a lot of people knew about it because you had to be like a music student to like take advantage of this or to, like to know about it. Loved it. <laughs> loved walking I love around. That you took advantage of it. Yeah. yeah, I I loved adventuring when I when I lived there. It's Boston's a really great city. I wish I could go back. I definitely have to hit you up if I ever go. <laughs> I've never been there before, says June. <laughs> yeah. It's a super pretty park that's right next to downtown. I used to go there a lot when I lived there. I wish there was a spot like that where I lived. It was just playgrounds, which no one really wanted to hang out at. Okay, <laughs> although fun fact, I had my first kiss at a playground or what was so special about the commons? I kinda wanna ask what was so special. Yeah, Well, this me one too. is funny, but I think I wanna explore this a little further. I'd go at night when no one was there. There was a quiet, calming atmosphere when there wasn't anyone. Sitting at the benches, looking at the sunset, reflecting in the pond, it just felt like home. I have to tilt my head because I think this is the first time we've seen Miles' as character. Aww. Yeah! Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Aww. He's a cutie. <laughs> um, 
The night before we left for college, my friends and I went to the commons. We stayed up until 4 a.m. talking about what we would be like in college, and we all promised to keep in touch with each other. I feel like a lot of this is like a thing that happens to a lot of high schoolers. Like you have like one last get together with your friends before you head out, or like you see like people before you say goodbye. I feel like I did this. It's almost like a like a ritual yeah. in a way. Yeah. What did What did you do? I feel like like something very similar where. You know, you, you, you and your, your best friends, your, like your little group of friends. Um, I don't really talk to any of them anymore, though. <laughs> I think about it. I think I talked to two of my old like friend group from high school. Um, and it is sad, right? Because I think a, this happens a lot at like, different phases in my life. Like when you meet people in different cities and you think, oh, you'll be friends with this person forever or you make a connection. Mm -hmm. But then you graduate high school or you graduate college or you move to a different city and it's just different. Um, but I'm really grateful for the Internet in a way because I think that you can reconnect with people in really special ways. Um, even in college, I there was this guy in high school I wasn't friends with like we knew each other but I always thought oh you know they're just you know they're not like a friend they're just like this guy who like talks all the time in class and I don't want to talk to him but we became really good friends because I got mono when I was in college and so I um would stay up late in like the hallway the like, geech might uh know which like in, in Hitchcock we went to the same college we were in the same dorm um but I, I stayed up all night playing StarCraft, the video game, StarCraft Brood Wars, and this guy from high school was usually the only one I'd be up at like 2 or 3 a.m. And so we just played StarCraft together all night, and now we're oh like really gosh, good friends because awesome. of that. So it's because of, you know, it wasn't someone that I said, oh, we'll always keep in touch with each other. I didn't even think we'd be friends, but it was this like moment, and now we're yeah. now we're still friends years later. So it's just funny how That's that happens. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. I've experienced similar things too. Starcraft friends, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very random story about myself. <laughs> but then everything happened, and I haven't talked to any of them in a so in so long. I feel like they've all moved on with their lives. Hmm. That's an interesting concept too, like the the concept of like people moving on while you feel stuck. When really, like we're mm -hmm. always moving together. I feel like, but I think about that yeah. sometimes because I do feel sometimes like you know what am i doing with you know my life or what could i have done if i had chosen like this different path or if i had done like a different major or if i you know did x mm -hmm. y and z and i feel like that just kind of sticks yourself in this like pool of you know yeah. what could have been instead of thinking like you know what could be so i try to, mm -hmm. to think about that too much but definitely yeah. get those moments and I wonder if it's like it adds to that phenomenon of like fomo and stuff yeah. and as as i've yeah also just lived life it's like i realized that like, getting stuck is not so bad um maybe not for everyone but for in my experience it was like yeah i needed that time mm -hmm. to just figure my stuff out right. and just be confused because <laughs> now i'm like okay i don't know everything but i'll just keep going and see where it goes and it seems like it's worked out so far <laughs> i'm glad I, yeah, yeah i think we do need moments of like stillness in our lives for sure yeah yeah. It's never too late to reach out. I probably wonder where you are. Interesting. So it looked like an hourglass, but I guess like the bottom triangle is the lake and the top triangle is a was a tree. Okay. I would not have <laughs> deciphered that. <laughs> right? Like I think yeah, the way it yeah. was connected, it was like a circle with like a thing I'm like how how does this connect? But there we go. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, angry ostrich said, I'm still confused and figuring my stuff out and cheers. Yeah, let let it be. Let it let it itself work through. Um, but Miles says, yeah. But I kind of ghosted them when I took my quarter off. I ghosted everyone. I feel that so hard. I done the same thing. I'm sure they'd understand if you explained. But it wasn't like we naturally drifted apart. Yeah, but you never know if one day you can't say sorry. I was listening to this news story about this phone booth in Japan that doesn't work. Ooh, I'm curious to see where this goes. A phone booth in Japan mm -hmm. that doesn't work. A lot of Japanese people died in a 2011 earthquake, and people started going to this phone booth to talk to the dead. 
Anyway, someone put a microphone in there with permission, and NPR did this whole piece about the phone booth. Is this real? Can someone look this up? Is there a, is there an NPR article about like a 2011 phone booth in Japan? I would love to see this. I got like chills. Mm. I got like goosebumps on my arms. Aww. Yeah. Oh. That's that's really beautiful. Yeah. I hope it's real. Yeah. Oh. I don't like to think about grief like that. Oh, Miles is very practical. <laughs> yeah. I was listening to the recordings, and it was painful to hear, even as a bystander. But after that, I realized it's never too late to reconnect. The fragility of human life is terrifying. This mm -hmm. is real, says the Geech. Mm -hmm. Oh. Let's, read, let's look into that later. Yeah. Um, I guess you're right. I keep thinking I'll do it. But then I put it off. Okay, I can say, you need to give yourself the chance to be forgiven, or... There's this one recording of a guy talking to his mom. I started thinking about what'll eventually happen one day, and we'll have all these years where we didn't see each other. Mm. Mm. And the Geech says, really long distance from This American Life, producer Mickey Meek tells the story of a phone booth in Japan that attracts thousands of people mm. who lost loved ones in a 2011 tsunami and earthquake. Thank you for sharing mm -hmm. that. Um, and this is kind of like mm -hmm. early to promote, but maybe not. It's never too early to promote. Um, in October, I'll be streaming and maybe beyond with a couple different people who study death studies. Um, so I don't know if we'll be talking about like processing like grief or trauma or uh, it might be a little bit more historical for one of them at least. I think we're gonna be talking about like Comstock women in Nevada and a history of like death studies. Um, and another one might be something else entirely, but I think it'd be interesting to to have a stream about these about this topic sometime yeah i'm looking forward to that okay. hmm. gosh i don't know what to pick what do you think yeah i personally i would choose the first one okay but then the second one gives more context of what june is where june's coming from yeah okay let's let's pick that one is there something you would want to say to her now? Okay, so do you think did my did June's mom pass away? Or is she still living? I can't tell from this conversation. Yeah, it's it's or kind they, of like, ambiguous. Yeah. It feels like they just might either yeah, she, either she is deceased or she like they don't have a close right, yeah. Like they're separated in some way. And Ostrich says, there's also a similar story about people who lost someone on 9-11. Here's an excerpt from the NPR article. In a week's leading up to the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks, NPR set up an old phone booth in Brooklyn Bridge Park across the river from the New World Trade Center and invited people to leave a voicemail for someone they lost that day. I'm getting so, so many feelings right now. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, by oh, the way. Man. Yeah. Also really interesting how, yeah, in both cases, there is a like a phone involved and like a way to like, yeah, calling, like mm -hmm. wanting to like communicate with people. Really interesting. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, yeah, like, it's nostalgic, right? Like phone booths aren't really, I feel like they aren't in use as much anymore. It could just be me, mm -hmm. but. Yeah. And it's it's like a recording, right? It's like a time capsule yeah. of, a, of a time that will either continue to exist in that phone booth or if it's recorded or not. Uh, in the past, when I was in my undergrad, I worked a lot with voice messages that um, I had a you know complicated relationship with my dad, but he would consistently leave me voice messages uh, when I didn't want to talk to him. And I started to use those messages. And because he spoke in Chinese, mm. I would make projects of what I wish he said oh, in the subtitles of these videos I would use. Hmm. Um, and in that way, it was like the, the act of working it through, listening to them, working it through, creating my own narrative that I needed at that moment. Um, it helped me kind of like forgive him and also like forgive myself for the way I was. And it's just it's incredible how art like this, like the phone booth in Brooklyn Bridge and even in Japan, it is magical. Yeah. It's magic. <laughs> Your sharing that story reminds me of um, a musician I really like. Her name is Samus, S-A-M-M-U-S. -M -M and it is um, after the video game character Samus from like the Metroid series. Um, but Samus with two M's is um, an amazing, um, kind of like does it all. Like she does um, 
I don't know the best way to describe her. She, right now she teaches at, I think I want to say Cornell or somewhere in the East Coast. Like she got her PhD and all she teaches, but she does, um, like she raps about like nerdy topics, but are also like really important, like mental health, um, growing up black, not having black representation when she was younger and like media. And in mm -hmm. one of the songs that she does, I think it's called, I have to look this up. <laughs> Cause she uses I love a, all the song recommendations. Yeah. Is it called 1080p? I think it's called 1080p. Um, and I think it's called 1080p because it's, again, a little bit of a nerdy reference, but it's also about like seeing things clearly and about wanting um, you know, her parents to be proud of her. And it's also about like how do you deal in academia with all this pressure, especially when you're a minority, when you're a woman, when your parents mm -hmm. are stressing you out. And she um, uses a voicemail message, this is where I'm coming from, from her mother mm -hmm. um, in this song. And it's it's a really powerful song. So I definitely recommend looking up 1080p by okay, Samus, S-A-M-M-U-S, if you have time. And also checking out you know, more of her other work. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, the lyrics are, are so good, um, a lot of her songs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you asked me this question. Let's see what June would say. Uh, I hope she sees that she doesn't have to be angry all the time and that as damaged our relationship is, I hope she has the courage to change herself. Hmm. So she's not deceased. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh. I wonder if... I wonder if this isn't totally linear. Like, I wonder if we do these, like, constellations in a different order, if we would unlock, like, different topics but right now we just have this one last one is it a circle <laughs> i'm just gonna it, it kind of looks like a hash brown <laughs> shape but it might be different because it's not connecting oh it is connecting to the bottom i see <laughs> look at these references i see white oh rabbit candy gosh. or i see yuckle. i love both of these i love both of these things <laughs> yeah that's hard to choose also I feel like it's more Yakult shaped. Really? I see I see be? White Rabbit. That's funny. I like that we see different things. <laughs> yeah. Alright, it's up to you whichever one you want. <laughs> but yeah, I, they re, at Costco, they recently came out with a ra White Rabbit candy uh, ice cream. And it's literally the flavor, but just an ice cream form. That sounds really good. Yeah. Um, these are for those people who don't know what white rabbit or yakult is. I feel like yakult has become like more popular. I think now we see like yogurt probiotic drinks like everywhere that are like knockoffs, like in a similar packaging, or um, maybe it's just more common in like big yeah. big chain grocery stores. But when I was growing up, you could only get it at like the Asian supermarket. Like my parents would get it, and mm -hmm. um, sometimes they would put it in a freezer. I don't know. Do you ever freeze it? I personally never froze it, but I would just put them all like in a one pile, like how they come <laughs> in the clear plastic. Yeah. And I would just, every day I would just drink a little bit and I loved how tiny they were. And I would just, as a kid, just play, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Geech says, yeah, white rabbit candy ice cream started in the Bay Area. What? It was part of That's a craze so cool. of white rabbit flavored treats patisserie boba etc mm, that sounds good also I mean, jealous <laughs> boba <laughs> i wish okay let's let's say we're gonna go with white rabbit candy um okay <laughs> what's that this is the packaging oh, yeah. for that? people who are unfamiliar it's a Chinese milk candy. My parents used to buy it for my friends and me to eat when I was younger. A rabbit is on a package of each piece. I've never seen you eat one. Hmm. It makes me think of my mom, or maybe it's time to change that. I think maybe it's time to change that. Or, yeah. yeah. I'm down to try one. I haven't had one for years because of my mom. There's so many things I disregard because they remind me of her. But I don't want my relationship with her to change the things I love. I really feel that. I think that sometimes, um, right, you might have like negative emotions or memories attached to a thing or like an experience because of someone, but it takes a while, I think, to heal from from that. But yeah, in the end, yeah. you have to you have to love what you love. Yeah. I don't think there's a right or wrong way to mourn someone who isn't in your life anymore. I feel that. Mm -hmm. You make her sound like she's dead. 
you know, there was this one time our Chinese school teacher was sick, so my mom was our substitute. Everyone loved her. She told stories during class, and she made learning Chinese entertaining. I was so proud. Everyone told me they wanted my mom back. Oh. Oh, ni hao wa. What zhao I am. I am called. Uh, yeah. It's interesting that they don't do like the pin the pinyin with like the you know like how you pronounce them. I feel like I had that when I was in Chinese school. Um, I was only in Chinese school until I was eight, and then I moved, mm. so I don't really remember like any of it anymore. I think if we had oh, stayed, dang. I probably would have been a lot better at reading and speaking. But yeah, yeah, I I left China early too, so I I don't know how to read or write most things, but. What keeps me able to so understand is just my everyday conversations with my family. Yeah. So. Why do you think she changed so much? That's a complex question. I'm still trying to figure out the answer to. Honestly, it's probably best that you don't know. Not to be harsh, but I don't think the answer is pretty. Knowing wouldn't change anything. She's probably going through her own issues or something. God is favorites. I'm definitely not one of them. Oh, <laughs> oh she's very harsh on herself, yeah. too. Um, I don't think that's how religion works. Hugh, I was just thinking, if we had picked Yakult, I wonder if we would have gotten the bottle instead in a different story. <laughs> like, I want to know now. <laughs> yeah, it, it probably would be. I, I'd be curious if you do another playthrough and choose all the different options yeah. we didn't choose. <laughs> yeah. Like, what kind of story you'd get. Mm-hmm. To be fair, none of us know God even, if he's even out there. I think every religious person would disagree with you. <laughs> Look, God, hear me out. You're really addressing God right now. I would say, thank God. <laughs> yeah. I know we have our differences, but I gotta say, you gave me a pretty hot boyfriend. You did give me really shitty parents in a questionable fashion sense, but you did well in a whole love life department. I mean, dude. He can be kind of annoying sometimes, but... God, please don't listen to her. And with that, I gotta say, amen. <laughs> amen to that. Interesting. Are there more constellations now? Oh, there are. Wow. I bet we just are have a few more. The... Yeah, I oh. am. So, okay, there's oh. one, two... Oh, wow. There's at least two, three. Okay, and I can't really... Um, did the screen get larger after we finished this? I think so. I'm just gonna okay. do Okay. Yeah. Oh, I like the sound. I see. I can say, I see a volcano. My friend Catherine used to call me Volcano Girl, or <laughs> I see that mountain in your neighborhood, the one we drove to the last time I visited. Um, I don't know. I want to know. I, I see it. I want to know why she's called Volcano Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I can see that. She says it's because I have a fiery personality. <laughs> that is a spot-on description of you. Yeah, Volcano Girl has to have a story, right? I'm sure. I feel like that's a nice interpretation of obnoxious or loud. You call yourself annoying, but no one thinks that. It's just you. Okay, I can say, but then no one else can call me annoying. I protect myself from other people that hurt myself in a process. Oh, I know this feeling, or honestly, I annoy myself. <laughs> That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Tan said it all started with my eighth grade science project. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to go with the first answer, I think. Okay. There's no way that repeating to yourself that you're annoying is good for you. Trust me, I know the feeling. I never said it was a good thing. If I talked about myself that way in front of you, you'd stop me immediately. Guess I just love exactly. to hate myself. Mm -hmm. Everyone has imperfect parts of themselves, but you love to dwell on them. That's because whenever I see cool girls, girls who have their stuff together, who have this effortless glow, I see them as versions of myself I could never be. If I'm constantly in this cycle of self-comparison, I never see myself as I am. 
Oh, Jamie. I wouldn't call them cool. <laughs> right. I feel like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like they, they might look cool to her. Yeah. But they also might be struggling with the same thing. I used to be like you. When I took time off school, I saw everyone advancing themselves in college, making friends, being happy. Those all felt unattainable to me at the time. Once that thought loop became obsessive, you lose yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I don't know how to stop thinking this way. This is probably how my mom is too, except I take it out on myself and she takes it out on me. Hmm. You don't have to be like your mom. Oh, I could say, this whole thing is stupid, I feel dumb for being sad, or I'm gonna need a sad vibes <laughs> playlist after this. Uh, definitely a sad vibes playlist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have exhausted that playlist at this point. Miles. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in high school, I used to listen to happy music when I was sad. I was that optimistic. I can imagine you crying to Dancing Queen by Alma. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Crying to Dancing Queen is sacrilegious. I could never. <laughs> then what was your favorite? What was your happy song? Baby, I'm Yours by Breakbot. Oh, I don't know. I don't know that song. Do you know that song? No, but it's again it's going on my list of things to look up. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's one of those songs. I'm really bad at titles. Sometimes maybe I would know this if I heard it. Like I, I probably yeah. heard it on, like the radio or like at the, I don't know, at the store. I just don't know it. Yeah. Baby, I'm yours? That's just as bad. Yeah, but once it's on, you're like, I may be suffering from questionable mental health, but I gotta bop my head at the very least. The strat <laughs> is to soundtrack my life with happy songs so I don't give myself a chance to wallow in my feels. Oh. I feel like this is when people are sad and they ask for puppy pictures. Then I'm like, my depression is way beyond puppy dog pics. I wish a cat video could cure my self-hate. Hmm. This is this game scrolling now, not me. Mm -hmm. Oh. So it wants you to go to certain stories now. I see a tea bag. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> Asian people make tea by putting in it leaves alone. Growing up. I didn't even know that tea bags existed. I Lao Lao never gave me white people tea. <laughs> oh my god. That's funny. Um I guess yeah, when you have a teapot, yeah. my dad just yeah, you just put tea leaves in a teapot and then yeah. you just pour in water. <laughs> yeah, I I didn't know what Lipton was when I first came to America and I was like, why is this so popular? Why is it in a powder? And then why do you put so much sugar in your tea? Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I had to learn all of that through time. <laughs> my um my ex boyfriend's mother, I gave her a bag of um really, really good like Taiwanese, like high mountain oolong tea. Mm -hmm. Like and um she you know, she she thanked me when I gave it to her for Christmas and she was like, you know, like how much milk and sugar do you add? And I almost died. <laughs> I was like, You don't you don't add milk and sugar to this tea. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some teas I think you can, but not that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's expensive. Is Lao Lao Chinese for grandmother? Yeah. We used to drink tea on the weekends as she gossiped about the Chinese boys <laughs> in our carpool group. Okay, I love grandma already. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I love Lao Lao already. She was friends with the other Asian grandmas in my area, so she'd tell me the insider tea about their lives. Ooh, good, good one. <laughs> Get out. Just leave. <laughs> I know. I am hilarious. Uh-huh. Okay. We always got along because she was so accepting, even though she grew up in rural China, or she told me she thought you were handsome when we met. I love her grandma, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Either or, I feel like. Yeah, I like. I want to know a little bit more about her grandmother. I this okay. might lead down that path. We'll see. Yeah. 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 Even though my grandma spent most of her life in China and worked in physics, she was actually okay with the fact that I like to write. You know, because Asian parents expect you to be in STEM. <laughs> That's good. She once told me. Oh no! I know this is me. You. <laughs> yeah, I... Oh, okay, okay, that's translation. Yeah. <laughs> it means, you want to know why you'll write great stories? It's because you see the world differently. 
Mm-hmm. I know, I'm so sad. I can only read, like, like small, small bits, like, how to, like, there. Mm. I can't, I only know the... Like, me. And San, maybe? Maybe not. Yeah. Someday. I wish I knew to. Someday. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big goal of mine. Oh, that's adorable. She grew up being taught traditional Chinese ideals, meaning you're expected to adhere to social order. Maybe the changing generations shifted her perspective. She's really accepting of the newer generation. She actually vocalizes how she's feeling. I've actually had um, similar conversations with my grandma. Oh, how old is she? Because she's 82. Oh. She knows like maybe 10 different English words. And just like as because I live with them, um, the, the ways that I've, I guess like, yeah, I noticed she's become more open is because like the way she was very much controlling of my mom mm. to be a doctor or a nurse and just like was really talking bad about my mom for a long time because my mom decided like that wasn't her field. Uh, and then now me being like just a wackadoodle <laughs> artist and like just living my life in this like way but at the same time like when certain triggers come up in my family i'm able to like all like kind of get everyone together like hey this is a friction in our in our home let's figure it out this is why my mom is triggered and this is why you're getting triggered mm-hmm. and let's figure out a way to navigate it and also why this is maybe reasons why you're feeling this way. And then, you know, an hour later, my grandma will come up to me and be like, Hugh, I'm so proud of you that you've like figured out a way to like calm your mom and also teach me to be less like, you know, imposing. And it's really interesting to see you live the way that you do. And, and yeah, then maybe also because of her age, she's just chilled way more out, you know, she's more chill (laughs) and that, but like, that was a really important conversation for me. Just like in the, at 8 PM, just one random night. (laughs) Oh, that's really sweet. I I feel like, yeah, I'm, maybe this came up during our, our playthrough of Florence. I don't remember, but I'm definitely like, I wouldn't say black sheep, but I'm the, I'm the youngest. So uh, my parents are definitely way more lenient with me. And I'm the one child who didn't do computer science or engineering, right? I did like mm-hmm. liberal arts and <laughs> not, not yeah. engineering. I did start out in mm-hmm. psychology. No, no, I, I started in biology. So technically I started out wanting to do like neuroscience because I wasn't sure, but um, obviously I'm not doing neuroscience now. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're okay with it. They don't understand what I do still, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Yeah, exactly. Um, and Miles said, "What? <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is that Chinese people never express their feelings or love directly. It's always like, you know, your mom is thinking of you because she brings you sliced fruit to your room. But my grandma does that and also says it to me. Oh, mm-hmm. um, also sliced fruit is totally a thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I would just like be sitting there working on something, and my grandma would bring in with a bowl of like. Or like half an orange be like, take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does that even mean? You know, like when I'm studying, my grandma will drop off apples to my room so I have a snack. That's I love you in Asian terms. They mm-hmm. should change the definition of, do you think this is I? Mm-hmm. Love in a I... Chinese dictionary. So it means bringing produce to your door. <laughs> That's funny. Exactly. Exactly. That should be it. That's so sweet. What does she think of your mom? Okay, I'm gonna look at June. Oh, I'm just imagining these two just laying in the grass together. What a beautiful night. Mm-hmm. They even got a bit of like auroras in the back. Mm-hmm. I can say she pretends our distance doesn't exist. Or if we're talking to five stages of grief, my grandma is a mixture of denial and bargaining. The Geech says, I had no idea you started in bio. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. And then yeah, I switched to psychology after my first quarter, I think. Second quarter? One of those. <laughs> hmm. I'll just say she pretends our distance doesn't exist, I think. Okay. There's this quote that says the opposite of love isn't hate, it's indifference. I think instead it should be the opposite of hate is indifference because that's how my grandma fights hate. 
Mm. <laughs> Thanks for leaving some bio for me. No problem. <laughs> you don't think your mom hates you, does she? Fruit sliced for you by someone who loves you is the tastiest fruit. It's true. It Same is. with water it that's is. poured for you by, by someone who loves you. Also the best water. <laughs> If there's a word for, my mom loves me out of social obligation, but also despises the very air I breathe, that's it. This is so hard. Oh, June. Yeah. I really feel for her, but I can also see, like, mm. you know, it's it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Do you think the opposite of love is hate? The opposite of love is still hate. I think where philosophers had it wrong is that apathy is how certain people show their hate. Mm. Well, love and hate are having strong feelings about something. Indifference is the opposite. Everyone has loved and hated something at the same time. No one's indifferent and in love. Mm. My parents are indifferent to each other and in love. Mm. That's complicated, huh? To think about. Yeah. Okay. This one looks like a lollipop. <laughs> I yeah. hope it is. Or a flower? I don't know. Yeah, I was gonna say, or a fan. Maybe? Ooh. Yeah, let's find out. Can I, can I connect you? I wanna. Okay. Will it, will it let me connect? <laughs> there we go. Oh! Oh! Oh, I see Joshua Tree. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is a awesome. sign. <laughs> don't even remind me. <laughs> Come on. I don't want to speak of the events of Joshua Tree. <laughs> oh, what happened at Joshua Tree? I know. Were they in Nevada? Oh, wouldn't it be nuts if this. I wonder where they are. This is this is crazy. <laughs> this definitely feels like the Southwest. Mm -hmm. um, I swear it wasn't that bad. Look, I don't think that seeing your girlfriend cry needs to happen after a certain number of dates, but I feel like our third one was definitely too early. I blame you. You're the one who said Lady Bird was your <laughs> favorite film. I've never seen Lady Bird. I don't know that film. No? No. Honestly, it's been so long since I've seen it. Oh, um, what is it about? It's, it's a coming of age story, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, with uh the main character i believe is like a super kind of like into film and acting and theater i don't remember what exactly but i do remember i did watch it in a time mm -hmm. that it it did touch me too okay. but now i don't think so yeah ostrich says it's an indie coming of age story all right yeah a lot of good references in this game and in chat today mm -hmm. Okay, I can say, you're the one who brought it, or I'm just saying, Joshua Tree cannot be a constellation. <laughs> That's really funny. I think, yeah. You want to say that? I, yeah, let's let's go with that one. <laughs> not, not to say that I agree, because I think Joshua Tree could totally be a constellation, but I think this is a funny thing to say. <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't realize it was going to make you cry. Well, you suggested two movies, either Lady Bird or that random sci-fi film. Oh, I see it now. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> How is Star Wars a random <laughs> sci fi film? Oh, no. Oh, no. Anyway, I wasn't particularly in the mood, but I also didn't want to sound unappreciative and reject your thoughtfulness. So we watched it. This, you know, mm. random sci fi film like Star, Star Wars or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. If you said something, I wouldn't have been offended. Okay, I can say, I was pretty touched that I mentioned liking Lady Bird and you remembered to bring it, or I didn't want to be exposed for never seeing Star Wars. <laughs> I feel like the first one. Okay. There is a surprising amount of people who have not seen Star Wars. I guess now it's just getting old, maybe? I don't know. Well, I've never seen the first few of Star Wars, but all the ones since, yeah, with Kylo Ren in it, yeah, yeah I've seen. And that counts. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I thought it was sweet that you were comfortable enough around me to cry. My sorrow was not sweet. I don't think that crying is embarrassing. I agree with this. I don't think crying is embarrassing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can be, but also I don't think it is. <laughs> like, as like, 
an overarching thing. Yeah, I think it depends I, on the context. Yeah. Yeah. I don't either, but I'd shared my life trauma with you before you knew my last name. Not to mention, you were stone cold the entire film. In your defense, the movie is about the relationship between the main character and her mom, and it was sort of related to your life. Mm. I should have pretended to watch the movie, but actually stared off into the distance to prevent the waterworks. Austria says for Star Wars, the first trilogy is the most beloved. Classics at this point. People have been fairly disappointed with the prequels and then the sequel, so it's kind of fallen out of fashion. Yeah, it's a lot. They're really milking it. Hmm. All right. I will check out the first trilogy. And Mao says, that's absurd. We are at Joshua Tree. Why would you bring a movie there, of all places? <laughs> I figured maybe we'd have some downtime if we were tired of hiking. I get that. I'm the same. <laughs> you should have brought a board game instead, or we alternatively could have made out the entire time. <laughs> I want to say board game. I want to see if they talk about board games. I think that'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know any. <gasps> no. Miles, surely you must. <laughs> the key. And, uh... Yeah, the geek said, I don't think crying is embarrassing when other people do it. Aww. You're sounding like June, geek. <laughs> <laughs> Hugs. But that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Simba concern. <laughs> mm -hmm. We could have filled the free time with our amazing conversation. June. I'm just saying that I will never live this down. On my deathbed, I will look back on my life and be like, oh, remember that time you cried? Not just a single tear or two, but sobbed on your third date with Miles? I will remember. I think it's a bit dramatic. <laughs> What's dramatic is sobbing during a movie where you're trying to impress the guy. My cool girl disguise is gone by the 15 minute mark. 15 minutes? Wow. <laughs> Okay. I really don't remember that movie. <laughs> I, I do remember crying too, okay. but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> the movie wasn't even sad at 15 minutes. <laughs> I can say exactly you get my point entirely, or I have the ability to think about Lady Bird and get emotional on the spot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I feel like the second one. Okay. Yeah. You see yourself in the movie. That's an emotional thing. My whole thought process was, with that movie, is absurd. Then what is it? The reason I cried so much at Lady Bird isn't just that I see so much of my mom in her mom. It's because they're able to reconcile at the end while I'm not able to. Mm. Mm. Oh, June. That's a perfectly valid reason to cry. Yeah. All Absolutely. All of these books and movies where if you just wait around long enough, they'll come by. But this is my real life. One that can't be wrapped in a nice, succinct ending. Mm. There's this moment when Lady Bird goes, I wish that you liked me. Her mom replies, of course I love you. But then she's like, but do you, do you like me? And honest to God, I don't know whether I would ask the same whether I would ask a question with like or love because I don't think I'm ready to hear the answer to either. Hmm. I'm sure that June's mother loves her and maybe it's just difficult to express it. That's that's my thought. Yeah. And also like, you know, being Asian American, it's like love is expressed in a different way, especially if we do have that language barrier with English and whatever other language. So Yeah. Um and Miles says, June. You shouldn't be ashamed of any of that. You know, at my high school graduation, my mom got mad at me for wanting to take pictures with my friends. She was grumpy the entire night, yelled at all of us during dinner, then straight up refused to speak to me. Mm. And it was like, I know high school graduation is stupid and meaningless, but it's like, I just wanted to have one day where I could feel like a normal kid with normal parents. And you know how Lady Bird ends. <gasps> I don't. Is she going to spoil it? <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> wanting your parents to be proud of you is human. Yeah. There's this one time I went to my friend Cindy's house. Her sister let me borrow her clothes and I helped do my makeup. Her parents saw us dressing up and ordered us sandwiches and we all watched a movie together. They were like, we do this every Friday. And it was like, why can't my family do something this simple without screaming at each other's throats? Why can't they let me pretend that everything's okay? I'm never going to understand the nuances between you and your mom. 
but feeling frustrated over your relationship with her is normal. I don't know anyone who wouldn't be frustrated. I guess I wanted to have something completely separate for my mom, where I didn't have to talk about her because I know it confuses people and I didn't want to deal with feeling misunderstood by more people. Mm. Oh, June, I'm sorry you're going through this. I kind of, so I'm just going to take a step back because I feel like very invested right now in a story and I just think that mm -hmm. the writing is like very, very like real. I really do feel like you know, you're you're having this like very late night conversation with like a good friend or someone who's confiding in you. And I just feel like, mm -hmm. I know, I'm like emotionally like caught up in this. <laughs> I don't know yeah. how you feel. Yeah, it, it wasn't like last time with Florence where it was like, visually it was captivating and there was still a distance between us and the characters mm -hmm. whereas this feels like yeah i i've had this conversation before mm -hmm. and something that came up for me is like i wonder like what, what are your thoughts of like chosen family because um very similar to june i've gone through this type of like confusion mm -hmm. and like uncertainty with rather i am a, someone who is one deserving of love and two am i actually loved and but within growing up coming of age and all that i found a chosen family that um were able to kind of like see the aspects of me and like in a way like reflect in terms of like the question are you a mirror window is like reflect these parts of me that i didn't realize is like okay like i might be able to take one more step forward with these questions with my own mom mm -hmm. or and if not if that question if the answer is pretty terrible i have a community to fall back on yeah so. i I think it depends on how you define, you know, like family or community. I definitely feel like, you know, you can have a chosen and I think it should be reciprocal though. I don't think like you have the right to choose people if they don't choose you back, you know, and to like yeah. enforce mm -hmm. that feeling of being tied together. But I do feel like, you know, there are people who I'm close to. So I do have that support network, I guess is what I would call mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. I wonder, um, you know, just really briefly too, I, and we did bring this up last time, but for those who might be new to Hugh's work, if you can talk about third third spaces, is that, I don't know if you're, if this is what you were thinking of, but I feel like your work in this, in this area might also kind of connect to this yeah. topic. Yeah, so, so what I do is, um, in the overarching like physical sense is i run this place called the cloud house and i welcome people to come in and just exist um and a third space is i don't i don't ask for you to pay me money um it's just whatever you want to do in whatever capacity that i can i will offer you that space rather it is a conversation a cup of tea um you want to learn how to sew i'll teach you how to sew if you want to look through my library definitely do it um and I just am trying to cultivate a place outside of capitalism where it's like, you need to be out there and make money while well, here just exists. And that's how I try to also cultivate my conversations when I am, you know, um, existing in my artist ways and when I'm making art with people and not just like in the solitude of my own space. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I just find that like having these conversations, playing this game with you, Kathleen, and reading the uh, the people in chat and just continuing talking and moving through words. Um, th th these hard conversations, right? About like family and how that's really complicated sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Okay, I will, I, I don't remember if you read this. Did you read Miles's? You might have. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, June. I'm sorry you're going through this. Thanks for listening. Always. Okay. All right, game. Where is the last one? Is it here? I don't know if this is the last one. Maybe there's like two more. Is this a circle? There's like a. Yeah. What do you think it is? <laughs> I don't know, it just looks like another circle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I hope it's a donut or a shrimp. I hope it's like a pig. I hope there's okay. like I hope there's like an animal. Oh yes. Oh. Well, neither one. <laughs> yeah. Close enough. I see a peach. <laughs>
Why a peach? I always ate them growing up. When I was younger, my mom and I used to go on walks in our neighborhood. She'd steal peaches off the neighbor's tree. That's... It's a Chinese family thing. I feel like we all grew up watching our parents steal fruit. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if it's like... I know that, like, you know, my, my sometimes, like, if they're, like, nuts, like, my dad would, like, help, like take a peanut from the pile or something, like, <laughs> you know, pop, like, a peanut in his mouth at the grocery store. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my, all my uh, <laughs> best friendships have either been us just, like, stealing fruit off our trees, like, with my friend, uh, Una, we'd, when the, um, what is it, the fruit on the cactus pads are ripe, we'll just go, and if they're right on the side of the sidewalk, we'll get a scissor, a knife, and a bag, <laughs> and we'll cut them off and make, uh, juice. Mm. Uh, the backyard, we have, our neighbor has a peach tree, my mom is like, well, the bridges are outside <laughs> and we can just you know and so for one summer we had just so many like mini peaches too <laughs> so oh and miles says isn't that illegal miles <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe probably or my mom is not intimidated by the law i kind of like that's kind of funny or maybe probably what do you think i would say maybe probably okay <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of that. Trust me, that's a thing. When I went to my Asian friend's houses, their parents had offered me stolen fruit as a peace offering. Then they'd mm. ask me what I'm studying, if I have a boyfriend, and whether I have post-grad plans. Mm. So the whole do you have a boyfriend slash girlfriend thing is universal. Mm -hmm. That's why I love like, yeah. that we have this offering of a fruit, just a, again, <laughs> as a metaphor. Yeah, it's all cut up for you. Mm -hmm. and extra delicious. Okay, I think all parents secretly worry that their kid isn't going to find someone, or whenever someone asks me that, I'm like, I'm already worried enough about my eternal singledom. <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer. <laughs> yeah, I think that we should go with that one. Have you actually said that? My friend's mom once asked if I had a boyfriend, and I was like, I'm trying my absolute best. Don't you worry. Oh my god. <laughs> Seriously, that ask us if boys are pursuing us left and right, but it's more like we are hustling to find a man. <laughs> then what happens if you find a boyfriend? Okay, they ask all the questions normal people are too afraid to ask, or they secretly gossip to my friends about whether he is a man of quality. Hmm. I like the first one, I think. <laughs> yeah. Actually, both are. Well, I think the first one. I, I know the second one I've had... Uh... Uh, I've had experience with too, so that sounds very likely, but I like the first one better. <laughs> if you were to tell an Asian mother you were dating someone, the first questions would be, what's his major, how rich his family is, and how rich he is. Yeah, literally. <laughs> not so not so much now, I've had conversations with my mom about this, and like boundaries of like, it's my life. Yeah. Please. I think with my, my mom, the first question would be like, what's his mm -hmm. race? Like, is he white? Like, or is he Asian? Mm -hmm. And if he's Asian, what kind of Asian? <laughs> Definitely mm -hmm. had that conversation. There's, yeah, there is like a discrimination within Asian American, like families too, right? In that sense, yeah. I can't take that kind of pressure. The first time my high school boyfriend came over for dinner, she'd ask us in Chinese, he was Chinese, <laughs> every detail about his family and what he wants to be when he grows up. He was okay with it? The week before, I went to his house, and his mom did the same thing to me. I like. I'd still be terrified. <laughs> There's so many very specific parts of Asian American culture that we just automatically understand, like the whole fruit th tree thing and dating. I was talking to Rebecca the other day about growing up as an Asian kid, and she was like, "I was so embarrassed of what our food smelled like at lunch." I realized that that was also me. I'm just gonna say, like, you know, I never had this issue because I don't think my mom ever like cooked anything, and I had to bring it to like school. It was only in college when um, it wasn't like a lunch thing; it was just like a snack thing. That it was like my my roommate was like, "This is too smelly." Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely experienced the lunch thing. Mm -hmm. People made fun of me because they said it smelled weird. I guess I never realized that other Asian kids went through the, the same thing. Is this salmon? It looks like salmon with egg. Yeah. Is this salmon? <laughs> I hope it is. Yeah, I think with so. Rice. That looks amazing. That looks yeah. so yummy. Can you all relate on this? 
yeah, it's like being bullied about lunch is universally Asian. And again, like, I don't want to, like, generalize because I'm sure, like, you know, again, there might mm -hmm. be a lot of people who haven't had this experience, but a lot of people certainly, like, you know, it's a lot of people do often comment on this. Yeah. I never even noticed that people made digs at Asian people for that. Yeah, people made math and rice jokes, but I didn't realize that it was as intense as that. None of it was over, I hate Asian people, but it was these subtle comments that slowly chipped away at my identity, or those didn't particularly help either. I suck at math, and people always told me I was less Asian because of that. Hmm. These are both just really, like, relatable responses. Yeah. yeah. And it's the, the subtle chipping away, it's, it's not just like the lunch, too, it's like like all these other microaggressions. Mm -hmm. I feel like just being growing up Asian in this country was like, yeah, yeah, that. Okay, let's let's pick this then. Okay. For me, I feel some sort of connection to being American, but it's more something I go through the motions of. It's not like I hear some guy's life story and think, that's me. I was talking about it to my friend, and it's like, we don't want to be known as just Asian, but everything we do is influenced by our Asian-ness. That's what a lot of people miss. Okay. Constellation, where are you? Are you finding it? Or no? Well, yeah, I'm. I'm trying like panning the screen right now. <laughs> okay. There. Ooh. Probably. Oh, right there. Another circle. <laughs> oh, I am gonna guess this is a hot air balloon or a diamond. I don't know. Okay, because you said fan before, so maybe I'll say oh. either the geek. It's the a flounder. It's the flounder. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Okay, so flounder, hot air balloon, fan. What about you? I don't know. I know maybe like a like a pillow. I don't know. <laughs> oh, <Ooh>. neither. <laughs> a sunrise. Oh. oh. Okay. That would be a perfect constellation. It's specifically the sunrise on our second day. Oh, these two. Like that's oh, really. Yeah. Yeah. That's really wholesome. That date changed what I had thought previously about love and relationships. I never thought I'd find someone who got me instantly. I can say that was legit me before I met you, or to think that something so inherent as loving is something we didn't believe in. Hmm. Mm hmm. Huh. I don't know. This is this is hard. I'll, I'll let you choose this one. I'll just say that was legit me before I met you. <laughs> Angry Ashes. These people are having a lot of sunrise dates very very early. I know. Like, first date at a park. Second date, sunrise date. Third date, the Joshua Tree <laughs> movie fiasco. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now they're watching the stars. Yep. Is this the f yeah, what day are we on now? Men who have the personality of a what piece of bread do not doubt their ability to find a partner, but here I was, wondering for days on end if I would ever get a boyfriend. I don't know if you remember, but we were talk we were taking turns making assumptions about each other, and you were like, a lot of people may not notice it, but you're actually quite thoughtful. I didn't think that anyone noticed the effort I put in. Wow, he's tall, or she's short, or both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's hard. It's hard to start. Because that tree right there, I don't know if it's in the foreground or in the background, but he looks the same height as that tree. Yeah. Definitely not as, like, he's taller than I thought he was going to be, but, like, just because they're on the ground together before. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. You remember things I said months ago? When you hear a good song, you tell me it reminds you of me. Of course I think you're thoughtful. When you said that, it wasn't just a nice comment. I felt like I was seen. I didn't want to just see you. I wanted to see you as you are. I never really thought people cared enough to try. I barely made any friends my first year of college, and I basically lost all of them the next semester when I took time off school for my depression. I was stuck in my hometown while all of my high school friends were somewhere else for college, which basically just made it worse. This is very relatable. Mm -hmm. Like I know a lot of people where you know they took off 
school for mental health reasons and especially mm -hmm. um the college i went to i feel like u chicago is where everyone's there like you maybe went to high school thinking you were like the smart kid and then you realize everyone here was like that smart kid so all of a sudden you're not like mm -hmm. as special anymore and mm -hmm. it was just very difficult for i think people to like struggle for the first time when things came so easily to them before yeah yeah exactly i can say that must have been difficult or you're taking care of yourself which was the best thing you could have done oh i like that answer mm -hmm. i'm gonna say you're taking care of yourself mm -hmm. A lot of my friends didn't get it because they knew me as this happy person and, and everyone moved on from me when I stopped putting in effort. It was barely better than the time I took off. Mm -hmm. I bet they didn't know what to say once they realized you changed. So then when I met you and you kept talking to me even though I was pretty awkward, I felt like I finally had someone. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize I had that impact on your life. Oh. I tried to fit in a lot. I joined the school newspaper. I tried to talk to people in class, but I never felt like I belonged. They all just tolerated me. But you made an effort to see me for who I am. This is a little bit cheesy, but this is really cute. <laughs> and Geech, I love that. Um, I have a few of the disparaging in Chicago shot glasses. Yep. And the shirts. <laughs> I don't know if I have as many shirts yeah. anymore, but yeah, absolutely. Dang. <laughs> Uh, what were you gonna say, Kathleen? Oh, just, yeah, I think that this, um... It's it's so cheesy, but it's cute. Like, this, like, wrapping up. I feel like we're coming towards the end of the game a little uh, bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just funny, it's like a carryover from the previous stream where um, Josh Webster was talking about, like, narrative predictability. Like, how can you tell when, like, a game is going to end? And sometimes, like, mm -hmm. you know, can you tell when, like, movies or books are about to end? And why is that? I feel like I'm having that feeling right now. <laughs> And it's, it's, this is probably it, yeah. yeah. I kind of had this thing. It's called a crush on you. <laughs> well, you came into my life right when I needed it the most. It's funny you say that, because I felt like meeting you was the universe's way of being like, here's something your way for all the stuff we've put you through. <laughs> when we first met, I figured you found me annoying. I was way more preoccupied by thinking I was annoying you. We should have just been honest with each other. I was too much of a wuss with you, to be honest. <laughs> I can say, yeah, you really were, or we all have our wuss moments. I, I think we all have our wuss moments. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'll clarify. Many factors, including your wussness, contributed to your lack of communication. You're going to comfort me by saying you're a wuss too? Wuss in solidarity. <laughs> oh, is there... Oh... Oh, there's so many. Yeah, I think there's two more. Wow. I thought we were gonna, maybe, yeah, there's just two more. Okay. Oops. Can I connect this? Okay. I feel like that is a paddle. Oh, oh <laughs> sorry, oh. I should have connected. <laughs> I see my neighborhood street light. Why is that? When I was about to go off to college, I lie under the streetlights with my friends, and we talk about life. Ah. Uh. I spent my whole life wanting to see more. More city, more people outside my bubble, but once I left, I realized that there was actually so much life already in my hometown. As suburby as it is. You always call yeah. it boring. Yeah. Yeah. That's the point, really. You can't go out, so you lie under the starlights and talk about life and why you're scared of the future and all that. I do feel like streetlights are a very suburby thing, for sure. Yeah. When there's nothing to do, you may as well share your deepest hopes and dreams, or I'm scared of the deep ocean. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like the first one. I'd like to think a great scholar said that. Who would say this great scholar be? Me. I said this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, scholar or not, I think you're right. <laughs> Ostrich, you should not play Subnautica. Agree. <laughs> and he really quickly, this is a little bit breaking the fourth wall, but how are you doing on time? Um, are you fine to finish this game or do you have to get going? I just want to make sure yeah. you're okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing great. Yeah. Okay. A lot of my secrets are shared under a street light at night. 
The stars hold all of our secrets. That's pretty intimidating. I think of the Lion King and um, of of yeah Pumbaa and Simone and um, why is it Simone? <laughs> Tim Timon and Simba are talking about like what the stars are and Pumbaa talks about you know they're actually just like you know big things of gas and Timon's like you know everything's gas <laughs> but it's the truth. <laughs> Yeah, everything yes. <laughs> the amount of times I've shared my secrets because it was late at night and I was in my fields is embarrassing. Then the next mor- morning, I'm like, ah, mistakes were made. <sighs> I know that feeling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, it took me so long to be like, honestly, it's fine. I could be cringy. I don't <laughs> care about being cringy. There was this one time I liked this guy and we were messaging late at night. I just started sharing my entire life story because I was like, he's going to get all of my life trauma and fall in love with me. But then he ended up ghosting me. You share your life story at all times of the day. (laughs) Yeah, but I think because I was exhausted, I convinced myself that we were soulmates, that he was destined to like me. Mm. There's a lot of hope to have. This is so relatable. I feel like... (laughs) <laughs> We're all, every time like they're like yeah 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 i wonder if they <laughs> with the with the writing of this they just like had the the people just like actually have a conversation i hold out on things that aren't meant to be duly noted no miles you can stay with me <laughs> okay like i say no but like i think we all want to be loved so badly that sometimes we show parts of ourselves you regret or i want to prove the cynical part of me wrong hmm. i feel like the second one okay i want to prove the cynical part of me wrong but i never do you always talk about how little you believe in things, but you really are one of the most secretly hopeful people ever. You took a chance on a relationship when any average cynical person wouldn't. I didn't think about what I was doing for 10 hours a day. Wow. Yeah, but it's the action that really counts and what affects your life. That's what you should hold on to. All right. I think this is the last one at the top. <laughs> Another circle. No. <laughs> a mirror? Maybe it's a mirror? Uh, or maybe a it's a light. mirror. I hope it's a mirror. Yeah. Or an onion. Ooh. A turtle? What do you think? <laughs> oh, I hope it's a turtle. Pine cones is ostrich. <laughs> I mean, there I is been somewhere I'm like, yeah, it's just a circle, and it turned out to be like a sunrise or like something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah or a lake yeah. or something. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I see a paper lantern. Mm. Like the ones in Chinatown? I used to go to the lantern festival there every year. When I was still in Chinese school, they'd make us do dances. One year, I was a lily pad. That's adorable. (laughs) You did so many things as a kid. Yeah, but none of them stuck. I'm not doing cultural dances anymore or really anything from back then or... I see how it is. Now you see me as a lazy adult. <laughs> it's true. Uh, the, uh, maybe the second one. Okay. The phrase lazy adult <laughs> came out of your mouth. <laughs> uh huh. I've never heard you talk about the Lantern Festival before. That's because I stopped going. Too old now? My mom still goes, and, you know, it'd be weird if she saw me. My friends still go, though. Your friends know what's going on with your mom, right? I can say, I think they just pretend not to notice, or, yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, both are kind of the same answer. They're kind of the same. Like, they do, and they also pretend. So I'm going to say, yeah, they do. I used to be so mad at my mom, and I thought it was just typical Asian parenting. At the time, I didn't see all the special parts about being Chinese. Like what? Seeing a Chinese person at a party and immediately feeling at ease. It's an unspoken bond of meeting someone, sharing no words, but understanding their upbringing entirely. I kind of get that. Yeah. And I, when I was in Vietnam for a month, um, I haven't been around a lot of people who share a similar ident- like look as me and very similar cultural practices as me and I by the end of my trip I was like man I don't want to go home like I just want to just exist and kind of just not stand out so much and just like 
I don't know. There's always a level of comfort that I'm not able to 100% like explain. <laughs> But. Yeah. When well, so when we last joined, this is for context. It was like May second or something. It was the very beginning of May, and you were about mm -hmm. to go on like a weeks long like trip to to Vietnam. Could you just speak about that a little bit briefly for those of you or people who weren't there? Yeah. Um. So I I went on a week a month long trip by myself. Um. No, uh, like I would describe it instead of the eat, pray, love type of trip, it was like pray, pray, pray type of trip <laughs> because I ended up uh, going there really just like interested and in, uh, Vietnam, Vietnamese culture, and uh, also about my like the the relationship between that South area of China and Vietnam because that's where I'm from. And I learned a lot. Like I learned about how like where my grandpa's ancestry is was a very big part of what the Vietnamese empire is was before colonization by Chinese, the Chinese like the, in the north and then I also learned a lot about from, from the people in Hanoi and in the north like how much we shared in terms of cultural practices of eating noodles in the morning um, taking naps during the day because you know it's too hot to work um, and then just like meeting so many different like uh, queer people and artists who just have found their little pockets in both the cities and the rural parts where I was for a couple weeks. Um, I decided to go also to take part in a permaculture project and I became friends with a single mom and her kids and I absolutely love her. Her name is Lynn and I decided to invite her over uh, to one of my Airbnbs after I left the farm and we just had a adventure together of just learning about her and her life and just how I saw in her like what my mom mm. might have, must have experienced when she was doing the single mom thing when I was younger and then um just yeah and I ended up at a monastery and learning from Vietnamese monks and just like man I I I it was the food that I was used to the vegetables I was used to growing up eating and I felt like oh I kind of didn't want to go home and I have a lot of friends there now that I am excited to see again next time I go back. I'm really glad you had all those experiences and it just makes me think again at the very beginning of our stream when you're talking about all the people you met at the International Car Forest this this past weekend just like this importance of you know like connecting to people through like story and sharing these life experiences I think that's really like meaningful and it's important and I think yeah i would love to learn more it. yeah <laughs> i feel like we talk for like great yeah. days we could talk about days for your trip <laughs> I know. yeah and the significance of yeah. it i it's it's hard because it's like um you know so much of talking about the past is also like we're leaving chunks of it out because our body has also holds that story now mm -hmm. of wherever we have experienced whoever we've been touched by their stories or whatever they've shared with us yeah. and it's like and I'm just able to kind of like pick little things that are just like, okay, well, here, <laughs> here's something. Um, but yeah. I love that. Thank you. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to progress the story. Um, there was this okay. one time in sixth grade where I was at a sleepover with the girls. We all started doing this one girl's makeup and she looked gorgeous. Everyone called her beautiful. But then when it came to doing my makeup, they made me into a literal raccoon. Mm -hmm. It wasn't on purpose, but Asian eye shapes aren't the traditional Western beauty standards, so no one understood how to do my makeup. This happened to me in middle school. My mom got so angry because, really? um, yeah, it was either like eighth grade or maybe it would have been like freshman year of high school. I went to like a sleepover and people were like, you know, when you, you know, you like makeup at like sleepovers and stuff. And one of my friends uh, wanted to pluck my eyebrows and I went home. My mom was furious. She like called the other mm -hmm. mom and she was like, you know, I don't want your, your daughter like, you know, doing that to my daughter again. And it was so embarrassing. Like I cried mm -hmm. because, you know, like, I don't know. It was just eyebrows grow back but for my mom it's like you know like don't mess with your eyebrows yeah. don't mess your she told me that if I put fingernail polish on my nails they would fall off um she has she has <laughs> oh a lot of like, cautionary like if you do this something yeah. bad's gonna really it's gonna happen um I still put fingernail polish but it was like that was like my relationship with my mother growing up and like you know yeah. altering appearances <laughs> yeah it's like a different beauty standard right that your mom would understood whereas like your friend's mom is like oh yeah that's that's normal 
Mm-hmm. So while my friend was complimented by everyone in the group, I was a clown. I'm sure they were trying their best. They were, but whenever I tell the story, my Chinese friends all know exactly what I'm talking about with my eye shape and a whole feeling ugly because you're Asian. And even like, um, I think that's the thing, right? With like with eye shape, right? If you have like a mono lid, or if you don't, I think that's like a huge like beauty thing. Like if you have like a like a double fold or or not. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've had that conversation <laughs> so many. Like from my cousins growing up, it's like oh, I didn't really understand it until they started pointing it out to me. Yeah. More and yeah, that that was. My mom <laughs> tells um, everyone that when I was a baby, um, my aunt, so her younger sister, told everyone that I was a really ugly baby because I guess when I was a baby, I only had one, or I had like a mono lid, like I didn't have the mm-hmm. double eye, like the thing, and. Um, there's a there's a term for it in Chinese, and so she would call me that. And then um, I guess later on, I my eyes changed, but it's just like mm-hmm. it's always like really stuck with me. Like that shouldn't mm-hmm. have any impact on on beauty standards whatsoever. It's just like gen- right. genetics, right? But for mm-hmm. some reason, one is thought of as more beautiful than the other for no reason. Yeah, and the makeup exactly. is different too. Absolutely different. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else thinks it's a story about me being an insecure kid, but no, it's me being an insecure kid because I'm Asian. I don't know why anyone would think Asian people are ugly. I hope it's not a fetish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Growing up, a lot of that has faded, but I remember being young and having this guy confide in me that he liked my friend being like, she's pretty for an Asian. Oh. Oh no. no. <laughs> I truly don't understand why anyone would voice that opinion, especially you. I can say, I used to wish I was white, or I used to have so much comfort in being Asian, but I don't know anymore. Hmm. This is, this is hard. I don't know. Yeah, this is a difficult conversation. Um, I'll say I used to wish I was white. Yeah. Sometimes I can't tell if I still want that. June, that moment you talk about, the moment you talk about being Asian, your eyes light up. You cannot sound more excited to tell me about an Asian market. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but those I'm parts of being good. Asian feel weird about without my mom in my life. I can't tell if I'm a fraud who is performing Asianness. Hmm. I bet you there's a lot, a ton of people who have fine relationships with their parents, but they don't describe their childhood the way you do. I just don't know if the Asian community accepts me. It doesn't help that my family is the black sheep of the Asian community. I feel like I'm learning so much about myself from this <laughs> game right now. It's, it's I'm, incredible. I'm glad. <laughs> um, they should understand that it's not your fault. You know how you see your parents just one way when you're a kid, but then you grow up and you have this big realization? My parents are actually regular people. I went through that, but I realized my mom isn't even that. Your mom is human, but your realization is more sad than humbling. I don't think my mom is this evil person. I don't think- I think she's someone who can't control her temper to the point where I can't have a relationship with her. I feel like over the course of this game, from the beginning to where she is now, I feel like at the beginning, like... I feel like now June, like here, she's a little more understanding of her mother, maybe? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't control who your parents are. Some people let that bad luck define them. My mom hasn't contacted me once mm, since our big fight. I'm never going to pretend like I know what you've been through, but you've had a rough couple of years. The fact that you still have the capacity to empathize with people, to give people your all, is a testament that you're a good person. I was at my friend's house for her birthday. While we were gone, her parents decorated the entire house and cooked us food. I got back, and everyone had dinner with them. My friend deserves all these things, but the whole situation feels more fantasy than what normal parents are like to me. Her mom asked about my parents, and it's like, what am I supposed to say? I don't speak to my parents? Actually, they're still alive? You could put it, uh, we live separate lives now. Yeah, but then I'm the one bringing down the mood. I'm the one ruining the group dynamic because I have issues. That's not your fault, though. I want to go where no one knows my name, where I don't have to think about the one about the person I'm supposed to be. It doesn't matter how much you run, it'll catch up to you eventually. Oh, oh, is there one more? <laughs> Accusing, is there one more? <laughs> I think maybe, yeah, maybe go to the right. Okay. 
Keep, is there, yeah, keep going. Keep oh my going. goodness. Okay, so there's one oh. here. Is there one up here? <laughs> nope, just one. All really? right. Okay. This, okay, this one is not a circle. No, <laughs> I, what do you think it is? A butterfly? Oh. Or an hourglass? I don't know. Hourglass? I was thinking chair. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, I see it from this side. Yeah, I think I see butterfly, but let's find out. It depends on how it connects. Does it go? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Those go together. Go together? Oh, it a book? Is it a book? Oh! Ah. Okay. I see my journal because it was the only thing that brought me comfort when I took time off school. And I think it deserves its own constellation. Oh, Miles. Mm -hmm. You don't strike me as a journal person. A therapist makes me write in one. If it's that important to you, then I think it deserves a constellation too. It's been almost a year since I took a semester off. I've been thinking a lot about that time in my life. Okay, what... What have you noticed, or, ah, the painful but necessary woes of self-reflection? Mm -hmm. I'm curious, so I'd, I'd ask the question, I think. Yeah, what have you noticed? I realized how much better my life would be if I hadn't been depressed those two years. Mm -hmm. You only took a semester off, though. My lost time doesn't just include when I took time off school. It was the entire duration of my depression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I realize how much better I would be now if I spent those two years and wasn't at college productively. But then it's like, you know, how do you be productive when you're depressed? Yeah. That's literally, it's a, it's so hard. Right. And you can't even, yeah, when you're depressed, you can't tell yourself, well, I could just be productive now instead of being depressed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But I get it. It's, it's a really painful cycle. But yeah. uh, let's continue and see what he's thinking. I wasn't the type of person that anyone wanted to be friends with. I had all of these goals that I put on hold. Now that I'm finally getting better, I could have done so much more. You can't control that you had depression, so it isn't your fault. Right, but no one told me that I could never make friends or make progress on my dreams. I did it to myself, obviously not intentionally, but it still happened. You're doing great things now, though. You're back at school, you have me, and so many other people. Yeah, but if I didn't waste those two years, my life could be so much better. I think the important part is that you picked yourself up. People spend decades confused. Mm -hmm. You know exactly what you want in life, which is already more than most people our age. Yeah. And it's like, he might have not even met you, you know? Yeah. If he didn't. Exactly. I've always known the execution has been the difficult part. Knowing is difficult in and of itself. I wanted to be seen for my accomplishments. That validation would have made me happy. But I had to stop being depressed and do something first. I can say you should give yourself more credit or it takes so much courage to allow yourself to heal. I like that second mm -hmm. one. Yeah, me too. But I knew that it was the reason people didn't want to be my friend. I carried the negative emotions with me everywhere. I was difficult to be around. I feel there's so many emotions in this game. I feel like the ending's gonna be yeah. very cathartic. I feel like I'm ready to like Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is mm -hmm. a lot. Earlier this year I ran into a guy I met at our college's newspaper. We talked in the semester before I dropped everything. When he saw me again this year, he was like, I'm so glad that you're in a good place in your life now because back then you were terrible to be around. Mm -hmm. He didn't yeah, have to yeah. say that. No. Yeah. But the reason it affected me, it really affected me, was that he was completely right. I tried to make friends, and it never panned out because I wasn't likable. I couldn't help that I was depressed. I know, but I shouldn't have said that. You never know what other people are going through. It's true that you never know what people, other people are going through. Yeah, yeah. Everyone knew and loved him. He was where I wanted to be. Just because people like him doesn't mean he said the right thing. I saw all of these people who were smart and sociable and I wanted to be them more than anything. I didn't care if they were boring, they were happy, and that was everything to me. 
Okay, loss, want, happiness. These are all the quickest ways to learn about the world or regardless of the whole boring thing, there are so many people like me who want to accept you as you are. You know, I kind of like the first one a little bit more, I think. Yeah, let's go with that one. Yeah. So I've learned. When I think about my friends, I'm always envious of their lives. They don't have to go through mental gymnastics just to get by. But I think that when it comes to the small <laughs> moments of joy, they feel them stronger than anyone else. But they're the ones who get ahead in life. Miles. I'm <laughs> just like shaking. Yeah. <laughs> and hug you at the same time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but does it mean happiness? They seem happy to me. They seem happy. See? I recently met this guy in my class. I realized that we did the same type of bar. So I looked him up. I saw his profile and realized that he was the real deal. When I was back at home, he was refining his style. You can't compare yourself. You could do that. You're already off to the right start. Yeah, I, I really feel like comparison is what kills creativity. Yeah. Um, so many times when I was younger, it's like I would I would compare myself and what I was doing and trying to be better. And like in my head, like, oh, I need to do this, these steps and go to these internships or these residencies to be a better artist. And then uh, and then I f is now I'm starting to see that like being a career artist or any or just a human being it's a process of just like all of this it's not like a straight line and i there's literally no comparison there's there's healthy competition is what i learned yeah but man i yeah <laughs> um but yeah Miles says i don't know though if i could ever reach that level i don't know if my best will ever be enough and now all i have uh, now I have all of this sorry and now I have all of this last time yeah there you go you needed that time to be where you are at now if you never went through the self-reflection or took time off school you'd still be where you were a year ago I guess I'm frustrated that I'm not someone else then how I like to see it is there have been moments in my life I wouldn't trade for anything if I were a different person I'd lose them or if you really think about it, we're these fleshy bodies trying to make sense of the world around us. There isn't one right way to be a blob of muscle and fat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, really like that. I, I really enjoy the second one. And it and as we're getting to know these two characters, it feels like they're being there for each other. Like as they go deeper into their own wounds, it's like June is now right. Like now she's saying there. things. Like, yeah, and I feel like she should say these things to herself, too. It's always, I feel yeah. like it's always easy to um, be there for other people and not apply the same advice to yourself, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going we're gonna to do the fleshy body answer. Okay. <laughs> there isn't one right way to be a blob. Love, yeah, <laughs> love the blob of muscle and fat. <laughs> how, how poetic, June. I mean, really, comparing one flat, fat blob to another pretty funny if you think about it at least that's what i tell myself to help me sleep then what happens if one fat blob likes another <laughs> i know this is your attempt to be romantic but i'm not feeling it <laughs> can't say it and try i get what you're trying to say about comparing yourself i could be the best version of myself starting from now and i still don't know if that's enough for that to happen, I need to advocate for myself the way you do. If anything, I need your patience. Are you thinking? What I'm thinking? We, we should. should. <laughs> I don't know what we should do. Oh gosh. Combine <laughs> ourselves to form, to the, form <laughs> the perfect person and learn, wait, learn, no, from, learn each from each other. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is awkward. <laughs> I would love if I could talk to people more. I could say, and I would love if I didn't blabber so much, and I, I would love if I were a cute artist, but I'm going to say, if I, <laughs> I think June would say, I would love if I didn't blabber so much. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. We would make a great person. Agreed. Okay. Okay. I love the peach. Yeah. Wait, is this it? I think oh. so. Yeah. Hey, June. 
Yeah. I really hope you know how amazing, resilient, and special you are. No matter what my current situation is, I hope you know you can always talk to me. I'll always be there for you. <laughs> Miles shifts his body to lean towards mine. Our face is so close, I can hear his breath. You're my person. I used to dream about what being in a relationship was like. I had all these fantasies about guys throwing rocks in my window and making me playlists to fall asleep to. <laughs> but what has happened between us is even greater than anything I could have imagined. Mm -hmm. I know, on our <laughs> these dates are so intense. Yeah. Yeah. They are romantic, though, in that, in the, you know, <laughs> movie sense. No matter what's happened in my life, having you here has made it all worth it. I'm gonna say, you're worth it all. Instead of really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no boombox out in the front yard. I know, Ostrich, where's the boombox? <laughs> you're the brightest person in any room. Remember that one time you walked me home after the Father John Misty concert? I love Father John Misty. I was literally just listening to him like two days ago really? in the car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. I love Father John Misty. Yeah. You told me you wish your past self could see you now. I remember. I wish my past self could see me now. Stars shoot across the sky. Does this look like K-pop hair to you? It 100% <laughs> does. It's that very specific type of bob haircut. <laughs> yeah. With the, with the lighting, like highlights. I know. And yeah, we know his yeah. hair is like definitely brown, but here it looks like bleached. <laughs> Like it looks oh, like a yeah, member of BTS yeah. or something. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, Miles. <laughs> Did you see that? I've never seen a shooting star before. And you should make a wish. Okay, I did. What did you wish for? I don't think I'm supposed to tell you. I don't like this rule about wishes. But you'll know what it was soon enough. Really? Let me tell you this. What I wish for just came true. Oh. Just now? I wished that I would fall in love this summer, and I did. Oh, <laughs> oh that's so sweet. Miles! <laughs> I love you. I love you, too. Not just that. I love how you are unapologetically yourself, no matter what. I love how you dance when no music is playing. I love how you get excited over the smallest things, like seeing your favorite food at the grocery store. I love that you have the worst luck when it comes to dating, but you still took a chance on me. I love the way you say yes to all of my weird ideas. I love that you get more beautiful and determined each day I know you. I love that I get to witness your growth. Please tell me you rehearsed that, because it was way too smooth otherwise. <laughs> I did give myself a good pep talk in the mirror before tonight. Oh, yay! Was... Oh my gosh. That was it? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for this. This was a really magical visual novel we just experienced. Yeah. What a what a, an emotional journey. I hope everyone who went through this with us and who watches it in a later recording, like that was really deep. <laughs> I'm I'm glad we did this. Thank you, Hugh. Um I don't I don't do a lot of visual novels, I guess. You know, I read a lot of books and I play a lot of games, but I feel like I don't always do visual novels, which I feel like, you know, again are kind of like in between. And this was <laughs> really special to play through all of it together with you and have these conversations in the middle. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. And I'm thankful for the people who joined us too. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I guess before we say goodbye, um, you know, we always appreciate when people take our survey and let us know how we're doing. Um, you know, whether there's anything you think we can improve guests or topics you'd like to see in the future, just let us know. 
um for everyone in chat uh we will be back next tuesday september can you believe it's, it's gonna be september september 5th Yay! at 12 p.m pacific and we're gonna play one of my favorite newest games we're gonna be playing the first hour or so of dave the diver next tuesday with stephanie chill who is a, a program person from florida humanities so i'm super excited to get to know stephanie better get to share the work that florida humanities is doing uh, and then don't forget that everyone you can learn more about our programs and our schedule on our nevada humanities website we have a schedule on our twitch channel too but we also have one um, on our event calendar if you ever want to check what's going on um also highly encourage if you're not following q already and their work um do so on social media you can find them on mostly instagram i believe um but yeah don't... yeah instagram and if you want to send me an email let's chat i love emails yes so he was he was here to listen and um yeah, I'm just really grateful. Thank you so much, Hugh, and everyone else for today. Um, yeah, we'll be back next time, and I hope we get to play another awesome game next time, Hugh. Yeah, excited. Okay, bye, right. everyone. Take care.